good afternoon am i audible yes sir you are audible good afternoon to all of you i you know, hope uh, i am audible to you am i yes sir yes sir yes sir uh, so uh, let's start uh, with the third day of uh, four day instruction uh, interaction sessions on the third day uh, we have planned two presentations of the first one is of criterion 4 and uh, next is is of criterion 5 so the criterion 4 uh, will be explained by dr pradeep singh walia dr pradeep singh uh, is a principal of scd government college ludhiana he is a renowned personality in the academic uh, cycles he has a very vast experience behind him uh, because we have only 2 hours and uh, we have to explain two criteria so i'm cut i'm cut short my uh, introductory remarks to just two more lines uh, hope you have uh, you have well understood the criteria 1 2 and 3 and if you have any kind of query kindly note it down and start filling the uh, excel sheet so that we can work on it later on so uh, i request uh, dr pradeep to kindly go ahead with their presentation and so that the participants can learn about the criteria he is going to explain uh, sir please you can go ahead with your presentation thank you for joining uh, thank you so much for uh, inviting me and um, first of all uh, i congratulate uh, the the department of higher education 
for conducting such uh, workshops. Uh, previous or prior to it, uh, all the institutions were uh, looking at the NAC uh, accreditation from a different perspective or from a perspective of their own judgment only and uh, their experiences. Uh, through these uh, workshops, I find we'll be able to share the knowledge and uh, learn from each other's experience. I'm, I'm here to share my experience only and learn from the experiences of uh, other faculty members and uh, all other coordinator, directors, principals of different colleges. Sir, I wish to share my uh, presentation. Yes, you can, sir. Kindly go ahead. Yes, sir, it's visible. Okay, uh, let, let me start with the, this criterion four only, which is on infrastructure and learning resources. Now, uh, it's a very pertinent to mention that uh, uh, in academics, infrastructure is also a very, very dominant and a very important aspect. Unless or until we have a congenial environment for uh, learning or teaching and learning, uh, we will not be able to ensure effective uh, outcome of any uh, course. Uh, now the infrastructure and learning uh, criterion four has uh, a value of 100, 100 marks. And uh, now the adequacy and optimal use of facility available in an institution uh, would be very much essential as it is mentioned uh, in the, the NAC uh, guidelines only. The quality of academic and other program on the campus uh, would always depend upon uh, the infrastructure facilities. It also require information on how every constituent of the institution, that is student, teachers and staff uh, would ultimately benefit from these facility. So uh, one thing is to be uh, looked into at this point of time that uh, uh, the infrastructure facility is not only student centric, but uh, from the perspective of all the stakeholders. Now, uh, it also requires information on, on how every constituent of the institution. Uh, and uh, another very important aspect in this very particular context is expansion of facility to meet future development. Why I have underlined a few uh, keywords, because you have to prepare a certain write-up uh, when we will be discussing these key indicators uh, in detail. You will find that uh, few uh, uh, in indicators are qualitative and few are uh, uh, quantitative in nature. So wherever there are qualitative uh, indicators, wherever there is a requirement to uh, write uh, a, a, a particular, you can say, information about uh, different facilities, these buzzwords are to be taken care of. So adequacy and optimal use has to be ensured in, in whatever uh, you can say uh, information you are providing. Student teacher centric uh, facilities should be highlighted. And then the last part of it should be uh, how the institution is taking up the expansion of these facilities. This will highlight the vision of the institution. Uh, in, in that context, it is going to be a very, very important uh, piece of information which you would be giving. Now let's come down to the key indicators. We have four uh, key indicators um, uh, in this criteria for physical facilities, which is having uh, a weightage of 30. Library as a learning resource, having a weightage of 20. IT infrastructure, having a weightage of 30. And maintenance of campus infrastructure, again, having a weightage of 20. Let's take up these key indicators one by one. First is the physical facilities. 
Now, as being suggested by NAC, adequate infrastructure facilities are keys for effective and efficient conduct of educational programs. So unless and until we uh, make it sure that adequate number of classrooms, labs, library, and other uh, curricular and co-curricular facilities, uh, 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 infrastructure facilitating extracurricular and curricular facilities are there, we will not be able to uh, justify the program which we are running. The growth of infrastructure thus has to keep pace with the academic development in the institution. Uh, academic development. So we say that, okay, we are introducing MCOM, we are int introducing BVOC, we are introducing a particular undergraduate course, but do we have adequate infrastructure to provide for this very particular growth? So uh, the academic growth will or should be in sync with the infrastructure growth as well. So your infrastructure planning or uh, the future planning of your infrastructure should be in sync with the academic growth of your institution. The other supportive facilities on the campus are developed to contribute to the effective ambience for curricular, extracurricular, and administrative activities. So it means that do we have uh, an auditorium? Do we have uh, a library? Do we have a particular facility, infrastructure facility, where our administrative staff is comfortably sitting and uh, performing their job? So all those activities are to be taken care of. So whenever there would be a write-up, whenever there would be a write-up to be given on in physical facilities, uh, not only the classrooms or labs are to be mentioned, but other things are to be mentioned as well. So those are equally important. For example, canteen is, is very important. Your placement cell is very important. You are, uh, for example, uh, finishing school, if you are having a finishing school, you have, it is, very much pertinent to mention that you have a particular place for uh, uh, a placement cell and uh, finishing school. Uh, if you are having hostels, it is very pertinent to mention how many uh, uh, hostels do you have? Do you have a separate hostel for boys and girls and how many number of students can be accommodated in those hostels? Do you have, uh, for example, um, uh, a common room for the students? So all those things are to be mentioned. And do you have grounds and other, uh, you can say sporting facility, do you have a gym? So if you have those kind of uh, physical facilities, I would, I would first of all suggest you to simply sit down and list down all those very particular facilities. And sometimes what, what happens, we tend to ignore certain very important things and uh, uh, which ultimately, uh, 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 after you can say NAC visit or prior to the NAC visit, you 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 just find out okay, हमने तो ऐसे सारे ये लिखा ही नहीं. We did not mention this is this in a, in our AQR. So all those facilities, whatever, even if it is in a particular uh, room or a particular you can say. Um, uh, space which is not uh, big enough but if it is there it is pertinent to mention so provision of expenditure in budget is made annually for maintenance and replenishment of physical facility which will ensure their availability on continual basis so another very important aspect is uh, expenditure or the budget budgetary provision which, which we normally um, uh, know of about those very particular things. So do we have, or do we prepare a particular budget and does this budget uh, uh, would have sufficient uh, uh, provision for not only maintenance, but augmentation as well. Now the physical facilities uh, are divided into two sub matrix, 4.1.1 and 4.1.2. What is 4.1.1? As I was mentioning that uh, in certain uh, metrics, you need to uh, write a description of those very particular facilities. So 4.1.1 is a, is, is a, is a qualitative uh, metric. So uh, th there you have to write uh, about certain facilities in maximum of 500 words. 
So what are those are the things uh, which are to be mentioned in, in the 500 words? Availability of adequate infrastructure and facilities. For example, classrooms, laboratories, ICT facilities, cultural activities, gymnasium, yoga center in the, in the institution. Now, uh, let me make a very uh, valid point over here that simply mentioning that, okay, we have, for example, 15 classroom will not be able to give you any mark. You have to, uh, you can say, uh, associate the number of classroom with the courses as well. You can tell, okay, we have two units of BCom, we have uh, uh, five sections of BA, you have BSc, you have M M M MSCIT. So according to those or a particular particular courses, these are these number these many numbers of classrooms are available. Likewise, laboratories. So simply mentioning the number of laboratories will not uh, give you any weightage. You have to uh, you can say associate the number of laboratories with the courses, and if you you can simply match up. With, uh, with those repetitive courses, this is going to be very helpful for you to score the maximum number of marks. ICT facilities, cultural activities, gymnasium, yoga center, uh, canteen. Uh, for example, uh, you can you you can have a particular you can say a common room for for your uh, students. So etc. Mean that there is no uh, uh, bar on you to limit your imagination. If you have a particular facility in your college, in your institution, you have to mention, but you have to have a particular write-up, uh, which is not beyond 500 words. So am I clear as of now? Any question? So we haven't received any in the chat also. Maybe uh, uh, these are points that have been cleared by, by you. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll continue. Please continue. Yes, yes. Now, the next uh, sub metric is 4.1.2, which is uh, a quantitative one. Uh, quantitative in the sense that uh, the marks are not dependent upon the write up or uh, whatever you are mentioning, but on the, on, on, on the basis of certain figures only, which you are going to give. So uh, 4.1.2 is, is a quantitative matrix. So what is it? Expenditure for infrastructure augmentation. There you have to write or you, or you have to give certain uh, figure only and uh, you have to provide a percentage of expenditure excluding salary for infrastructure augmentation during the last five years. So, uh, as uh, you have been listening to uh, various uh, resource persons previously, uh, there are a few met metrics uh, where the information is to be given for the completed academic year. And there are certain metrics where the information is to be provided for the last five year. Last five year mean the, those are the five year for which your accreditation is being um, worked on or uh, on the basis of which your, your score would be calculated. So here in this very part of matrix, you have to provide uh, the expenditure for the last five years. So uh, what do you need to do? Very simple, total expenditure for infrastructure augmentation, excluding salary, and the total expenditure, excluding salary. Now, uh, you would say that, uh, what is the meaning of uh, total expenditure for infrastructure augmentation? And uh, what is uh, the difference between total expenditure? Where this is this is clearly being defined that whatever expenditure you are making for augmenting the infrastructure. For example, you are you are building a uh, you you are constructing a new building. You are constructing a new block that comes under augmentation. You are you are. Uh, constructing one, uh, for example, lab, that comes under augmentation. You are providing a particular, uh, for example, gym, and you are constructing it from ground zero, that comes under infrastructure augmentation. 
uh, there is there is a particular block where there are only four rooms, but you are adding four more rooms in that particular block. That comes under augmentation. So whatever construction cost you are spent, uh, you are you are incurring that comes under augmentation only. So uh, and the total expenditure mean that uh, any other type of expenditure excluding salary. Okay, so any other expenditure excluding salary would be your total expenditure. So it also include the, the expenditure made on building as well as other, uh, you can say uh, expenditures as well. So other expenditure, uh, I can give you a few examples. For example, uh, uh, you are incurring a certain expenditure on, 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 on uh, uh, buying certain equipment on purchasing certain uh, uh, furniture items so all those are of items should uh, would be added to the total expenditure part but out of it out of the total grants which you are receiving uh, out of the total uh, you can say funds you are ex expanding or spending in, in a particular year uh, would be that of uh, importance to to you so do you understand the difference between total expenditure for infrastructure augmentation and total expenditure? Yes, sir. Okay, so clear. we'll move on. And if uh, so, participants uh, can write in the chat box if you have any kind of query. So please, sir, please go ahead. So what you need to do, you have to uh, upload uh, uh, certain information. There is the institutional data in the prescribed format. Uh, this format is also um, uh, the same for uh, criterion 4.4.1. I'm going to discuss that one as well. You have to upload supporting document. Now, what need to be, uh, what would be the supporting document? If you are constructing a particular building, you can simply click a geotagged photo of that very particular building and upload it. If you are completed constructing a particular building, you can include it in, in, in your, uh, in support of your document. If you have received certain grant, that very particular, you can say letter of the grant can be uh, uh, given as a, as a proof of uh, supporting uh, document. For example, there are many sources from where you can, or you will be receiving grants. Government grants are there, or uh, the grants from some alumni would be there. Another very important component is the central government grant in the shape of Rusa uh, Rashtriya Uchtar Siksha Bhyan is giving you certain grants. So there are different sources of grants. So what you can do, you can simply uh, upload these very particular supporting doc document on your website, on your web page, and give a link of it in, in your uh, uh, AQRs and uh, in your SSRs. So uh, this is what it is me meant, uh, the prescribed format in which it is to be given. So the prescribed format, which is same for 4.4.1 is uh, the year. For example, you have to give information for the last five years. So year wise information is to be given. In the first uh, column, uh, year is to be mentioned. In the second column, budget allocated for infrastructure augmentation. What was the budget? How much grant did you receive? Expenditure for infrastructure augmentation. Expenditure on maintenance of academic facilities, excluding salary. So uh, here, expenditure on maintenance of academic facility would also be given. For example, uh, there is a particular, you can say lab, and uh, it requires certain renovation, or there is a particular classroom which requires certain renovation. So you are maintaining those very particular infrastructure facilities only. Uh, isme salary nahi aayegi, isme maintenance of equipment nahi aayega. Maintenance of academic facilities only. Okay, expenditure on maintenance of physical facilities, excluding salary for human resources, and then the total exp expenditure, excluding salary. So this is the format in which it is to be given. So what you need to do is to bifurcate it into three sub parts. Number one, which is given in column number three, expenditure for infrastructure augmentation. Augmentation here would mean 
you are constructing new buildings you are constructing new classrooms you are constructing new uh, co curricular or curricular facility uh, number 3 expenditure on maintenance of academic facilities classrooms library labs and then the expenditure on maintenance of physical facilities for example uh, 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 whitewash would be an annual feature so that would come under maintenance of uh, physical facilities only academic facility would here there are two things academic facility and physical facility academic facilities uh, clearly three things to be mentioned classrooms labs and library and expenditure on maintenance of physical facility all other facilities for, for example grounds for, for example your administrative staff for example your hostels for example your canteen for example your uh, grounds all those expenditure to be given in this very particular column only and the total expenditure ex is excluding salary clear so this is the format in which the the information is to be given so another very uh, pertinent point or take away point over here is uh, you should have one committee uh, in which i i would propose that your bursar would be very much helpful your campus in charge would be very much helpful your contract committee uh, would be very much helpful so the person drawn from those very particular core area which look into uh, such facility uh, you have to prepare one uh, one one um, uh, sub committee which will which is going to give you these very particular figures okay so in addition to the information which you would be receiving from your uh, support staff for example your administrative staff uh, the, this committee is to sit and uh, uh, simply dissect the information given to you uh, by your uh, uh, finance people or accounts branch and uh, uh, and make sub categories uh, which is to be given in this particular criteria okay so this is my experience only uh, when i ask my uh, funds clerk or my accounts branch to give me the total expenditure they simply provide me one statement or uh, income expenditure statement where i have to simply find out which component belongs to augmentation which expenditure belongs to academic facility which component become uh, goes to the physical facility so the people who are associated with these very particular sub component would be able to readily identify instead of uh, um, putting some person who does not know anything about funds who, who does not know anything about expenditure uh, on certain uh, facilities i would suggest draw people who are associated with it the people who are in your contract committee the people who are in your purchase committee the people who are uh, there to look after your funds for example bursars so they would be able to sit and uh, then uh, bifurcate the total expenditure which we, which is being uh, made year wise now the sop this is very important to know so uh, with respect to 4.1.2 certain guidelines are being provided uh, it says provide the consolidated fund uh, uh, allocation towards infrastructure augmentation facility duly certified by the finance officer oblique chartered accountant so uh, whatever information you are giving that should not be a particular information provided by simply by one clerk that has to be uh, counter signed by a finance officer or a chartered accountant finance officer uh, here would mean that in government institution we do not have uh, the liberty to go to a chartered accountant for every kind of fund uh, for example uh, if we have pla or af uh, or a uh, a particular you can say uh, government grant comes to you then that cannot be uh, audited by a chartered accountant that has to be audited by the controller and auditor general uh, uh, people only a ag wale aange the wo audit karenge so par 
whatever whatever here is being mentioned has to be provided uh, provide the consolidated consolidated fund allocation towards infrastructure augmentation facilities duly certified by the finance officer so all your sanction uh, in case of a government uh, institution all those sanctions which comes under the signature of uh, the directorate would be there uh, highlight the relevant item in the audited income and expenditure statement so uh, as I, I was telling you that uh, income expenditure statement has to be prepared and then you have to uh, simply uh, find out a particular expenditure and and uh, why this expenditure is for augmentation why this is for uh, for example maintenance so there you have to highlight that okay this belongs to augmentation this belongs to um, uh, repair and renovation this belongs to uh, certain other uh, component so another very important thing is which is given in the sop this metric is supposed to be looked at with the perspective of infrastructure augmentation only okay so whatever expenditure is to be given the broader objective is to highlight the infrastructure augmentation in case of privately funded a higher education institution the document should be certified by the chartered accountant okay so uh, in case of uh, private colleges or aided colleges they have the liberty to get the accounts audited by the chartered accountant and provide the audited statements only focus of this metric is on to acquiring new infrastructure then the another point is avoid recurring expenditure on laboratory maintenance of infrastructure and acquisition of books and journals under this metric. so we have two types of expenditure right recurring and non recurring so uh, whatever expenditure is to be given under this very particular head 4.1.2 has to be non recurring okay so whatever we are mentioning that has to be non recurring Another, now what are the takeaways from uh, this SOP? First of all, whatever information we are giving that has to be authenticated information, that authentication has to be done by the finance officer or a chartered accountant. Uh, uh, in case of uh, government uh, institution, uh, the audited statement would certainly help, but uh, uh, we all know that uh, uh, our accounts are not audited in um, government institution annually so that has to be then we have to look for an alternate alternate would be your bursars or your finance officers or your uh, superintendent accounts would be uh, authenticating that very particular information uh, this is 4.1.2 everything about 4.1.2 any question at this stage so another uh, criterion uh, is library as learning resource and it has a weightage of 20 points um, now the library hold holdings in terms of books journals and other learning material and technology aided learning mechanisms which enables student to acquire information knowledge and skill oh, now a recent development in the field due to uh, availability of digital mean the functioning of library has also undergone a change. Automation of library using IGLMS uh, use of e-journals, books, providing remote access to e-resources in the library have become a matter of necessity. Providing for these and such other development as well as utilizing them uh, well are important indicator of the quality of an academic institution. So this paragraph is given in the uh, in the handbook of information itself uh, why i have uh, simply dissected and uh, given you the four statement because this library as a learning resource is a qualitative uh, metric only you have to write a particular description so all these four components are to be given these are to be highlighted uh, in term why uh, and how your library is enabling uh, the acquiring of information knowledge and skill 
uh, have you uh, you can say upgraded your uh, uh, library to provide for digital means are you using e journals books and providing remote access to to e resources and other uh, development uh, which are uh, associated uh, with library as a learning resource only so the key indicator 4.2.1 is library is automated using integrated library management system ilms subscription to e resources amount spent on purchase of books journal uh, and per day usage of library so what is take away from this very particular uh, metric that if you are not at this point of time uh, made your library automated now is the time you have to get it done then you have to have a library management system which provide for easy access of information for example all your uh, catalog should be digitized and available of online or offline to the to the to the users uh, offline here would mean that uh, you can have a particular server or a computer uh, in your library itself where they can access your uh, uh, catalog uh, online would here would uh, would here mean that uh, you can uh, club it with the ilms uh, facility or ilms software and provide this facility online to your subscriber to your students uh, faculty and other people who are uh, uh, in your organization to access the e resources uh, again another thing is you can have a dedicated page of uh, library in, uh, uh, in your uh, college website where uh, this kind of information should be provided and your library uh, uh, management system should give an access to the students for e journals e books uh, for example uh, most of us uh, know that there is a particular uh, facility given by uh, given to us by the igno basically uh, and uh, ugc is also a partner to it in flipnet in flipnet is is a very very cheap and uh, widely used uh, uh, e resource uh, facility where there are lakhs of books and journals and other uh, e-resources available for our students. Uh, and it's very cheap. Uh, can have an Flipnet uh, uh, subscription for your uh, organization for as little as 6,000 rupees a year. So in less than 6,000 rupees, you would have a particular facility uh, through which you can give an access to your students and your teachers to a host of uh, e-resources. Uh, what is uh, required? There is a simple procedure to register on Inflipnet and provide the data of your faculty and students uh, in a particular uh, prescribed format. So if you would uh, simply visit that website, uh, uh, the website will be able to help you in registering on that. Uh, in addition to it, we can have a host of other uh, uh, e-resources uh, which we can subscribe, e-journals, e-books, as per, as per the requirement of uh, your uh, courses only, you can find out. So here, what do we need to do? Uh, you have to provide the, the proof of each and everything which you are mentioning in your write-up. You have to prepare a write-up of 500 words so if you are mentioning that, okay, you have uh, a particular library in which uh, computers uh, are being provided to the student, there is a particular uh, section in, in, in the library where they can um, uh, have an access to the computer and internet and they can have access to the e-resources. Then you can simply click a photograph, geotag it and upload it. If you have purchased certain computers for the library, if you have purchased certain ILMS software for your library, if you are, uh, you can say, subscribe to a particular e-resource or e-journal or Inflipnet, if you are paying subscription to it, you can simply uh, copy uh, that very invoice or bill of that facility and upload. So additional information uh, would definitely 
help in substantiating uh, or highlighting uh, whatever you are mentioning in your write up so you cannot simply keep on writing unless and until you can prove it okay so this is not going to help you write up has to be very 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 carefully drafted take help of uh, i would suggest the uh, uh, for every write up please uh, make a committee of uh, certain uh, senior people or certain uh, teachers from the english department because whatever we are mentioning uh, is to be mentioned in is to be written in english language only so uh, grammatically and otherwise that has to be very much carefully drafted but i i uh, uh, no offense to be taken but uh, i would say that other people who are associated with the library are to be uh, kept in mind uh, the librarian library restorer uh, for example library committee if you are having uh, so write up has to be taken from or information has to be taken from them and uh, the peop uh, the faculty from the english department uh, uh, their help can be taken in drafting the this description then the other is uh, 4.3 and which is on it infrastructure it is very much pertinent uh, and very important uh, thing to be looked at because of uh, the recent uh, you, you can say pandemic condition and uh, prior to it as well because this ict is not a newly in introduced kind of component it is there for the last uh, probably 15 years so it infrastructure is is now is having or gaining momentum that is another uh, reason uh, due to uh, uh, we say that it we cannot function because uh, without the it adequate it infrastructure and this is quite justifiable uh, uh, statement the institution adopts policies and strategies for adequate technology deployment and maintenance two things to be taken uh, two buzzwords which are there in this statement itself technology deployment and maintenance because uh, uh, it infrastructure uh, uh, depreciate uh, uh, in a, in a, in a faster manner uh, it uh, so we have to keep uh, keep pace with uh, those are particular things Uh, software development uh, taking place, and every year we find a new version of Microsoft or certain other software comes up. So we have to keep pace of with those those are particular software uh, commensurating uh, associated with the software. Even the hardware needs to be updated. So two buzzword to be taken from uh, the first statement is technology deployment and technology maintenance. so the policies and strategies with reference to technology deployment and technology maintenance so this need to be kept in mind because in this component again there are two sub component which is one is qualitative and one is quantitative so for all qualitative aspect you need to mention how your institution is taking care of technology deployment and maintenance then ict facilities and other learning resources are adequately available in the institution for uh, for academic and administrative purposes now this this is this is a very very uh, important thing and uh, very tricky to prove what is adequacy of availability in the institution so adequacy would depend upon the courses which you are offering the facilities you are offering and the types of uh, things you are uh, doing uh, for example you are you are having a particular office do you have it ict facility to enable their task uh, you have a library so do you have ict facility to facilitate those are particular things you have uh, classrooms do you have smart classrooms so all those things are to be looked into so adequacy would depend upon the requirement of the institution so the staff and student have access to technology and information retrieval on current and relevant issue mai isko mai is cheez nu baad vich highlight karda jadon assi sub criteria 
karange so simply giving for example i say that okay in my institution there are 250 uh, computers but are those relevant for everyone not not necessarily so relevancy has to be looked at it from a different perspective so uh, i'll i'll explain it later on the institution deploys and employs ict for a range of activities so I, ict is not only confined to a one aspect but uh, it has uh, a wider uh, scope and uh, wider usage this need to be highlighted in your write up so the buzz buzzwords are technology deployment maintenance ict facility for academic and administrative purposes uh, then uh, ict for a range of activities so wherever you would be preparing a write up all those things are to be kept in perspective now uh, as i was telling you there are two sub matrix another the first one is 4.3.1 which is again a qualitative one so institution frequently updates its it facilities and provides sufficient bandwidth for internet connection simple statement which is given but i would suggest you to simply take your time take a moment and then start writing on it so i institution frequently updates its it facilities if i take you back to the main frame the institution adopt policy and strategies for adequate technology deployment and maintenance so ye a wala jada point hai ede ch wapas aa gaya institution frequently updates its it facilities and provides sufficient bandwidth for internet connection for example i say that okay ke ji my way of teaching is a blended one blended here would mean that okay uh, there is classroom teaching as well as online teaching as well for the last two years we have been listening to this very pretty buzzword ke ji blended mode of uh, teaching and learning blended would mean that okay we are interacting with our student through other means not necessarily physically so do we have enough of those facilities within our institution to uh, highlight that very pretty point for example uh, in one of the institution where i was working earlier had a bandwidth of uh, uh, a lease line of 100 mbps only okay so 100 mbps 100 mbps was okay 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 type of bandwidth which was uh, uh, which was sufficient for uh, day to day uh, things for example we had given access to different department to make use of internet uh, department rooms only not to the students and in the department we had only one computer in each department which would have internet connection we had uh, three uh, computer labs and uh, in in those three computer labs uh, which were meant for pgdca bca and uh, msc it students we had given a limited access to uh, to uh, of internet to those students uh, internet access was given to the administrative block internet access was given to the library and that's it when this blended uh, mode of teaching happened when every you can say teacher wanted to connect to the internet through their mobile phone or through their uh, laptops then we had to increase the bandwidth because 100 mbps was not keeping pace with it so this is what is meant are we keeping pace with the the uh, with the requirement so हम कहते हैं जी ब्लैंडेड मोड आर वी प्रोवाइडिंग इनफ ऑफ लैपटॉप्स और अदर एनेबलिंग गैजेट्स टू अवर स्टाफ सो अगर हम ये कहते हैं कि जो ओके आवर टीचिंग इज ब्लैंडेड वन एंड नॉट ओनली फिजिकल बट इन 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 ऑनलाइन मोड एज वेल देयर यू हैव टू हाईलाइट द फैसिलिटीज व्हिच यू हैव क्रिएटेड फॉर इट ओके सो बी वेरी केयरफुल व्हाट काइंड type of statement you are making and whether you will be able to uh, give sufficient uh, proof of 
that very particular uh, updation or not. Okay, so internet bandwidth is again a very important aspect. So I would suggest every college to introspect and uh, find out whether they have adequate um, bandwidth or adequate IT facilities. Now is the time to, to, to spend on uh, the IT facilities as well. Earlier, the computer were, were taken or laptop, laptops were taken as Punjabi uh, maintenance cost jada they come cut strip typing purpose was they use on the name. Now I would feel that each and every staff member should be given an access to uh, the IT uh, facility uh, necessarily. Uh, smart classrooms, uh, laptops, or computers, not only for academic, but for research purposes as well. So uh, this is to be looked at. Uh, another subcomponent of 4.3 is 4.3.2. Now here, what they want, they want you to give the student computer ratio, simple computer, student computer ratio. Now here you would, what uh, the institution would generally do, they simply uh, find out the total number of computers, total number of students are there and they simply find out the ratio, students to computers. Now I'll, I'll take you to another slide. And this is going to be an eye-opening one. SOP. Now, when we are going to calculate or find out how many number of computers are there, the number of computers available for student use only be provided. So all those computers, which are meant for faculty, which are meant for administrative purposes are not to be counted, are not to be counted. Okay. So all those computers, for example, I was telling you that we have created a particular section in library where they can access uh, e-resources. Those computers are to be added. In our placement cell, we have computer, which give an access to the students to find out job opening that has to be counted. We have uh, computer labs where the students of uh, BCA, MSC IT, uh, or uh, other MSCs in which computer as a subject is a component that those are to be counted. If we have a particular common room where we have created a, a particular section of uh, section for the student where they can access to the computer, those computers are to be added. If we have a particular, you can say computer center in our hostel for our students, those computers are to be added. The computers lying in principal's office, the in bursar's office, in accounts branch, in funds uh, clerk's room, in uh, examination room, uh, or examination branch, those are not to be counted. Okay, so we should have a clear cut uh, demarcation or distinction between computers meant for students and computers not meant for uh, students. So bills for purchase of computer to be provided. So you need to have a particular record. When did you buy that computer? how old that computer is, whether it is functioning or not. So that need to be kept in mind. Highlight the entries of computer purchased in stock register to, to be uploaded. So how do we tell them that, okay, we have computer, simply mention your number one, two, you have to scan the pages of stock register, wherever the entries are being made, and those are to be given as additional information, okay? So the data pertaining to the latest completed academic year is to be given only. Here, you have to give the current situation only. Current would mean the data pertaining to the latest completed year. When we were discussing uh, the expenditure to be given uh, in case of physical facility, there the expenditure was to be given for the last five years for which accreditation has to be uh, worked on. Uh, you, we, can, we say that the period uh, 
uh, under reference. But for this repetitive criteria, the data has to be given for the latest completed academic year. So the number of computers which were there in the last completed year, for example, the last completed academic year for our purpose would be 21, 22. Okay, so agar aap, uh, if you are going for accreditation in the year, in this year or uh, probably next year, so the last academic year in, in that situation would be the year 20, 21 and 22. Another uh, very important thing is to be uh, the computer for office and faculty use will not be considered as, as I told you earlier. Computer purchased after latest completed academic year not to be considered. So uh, you cannot, um, for example, given uh, our experience, I guess study affiliation for years, and uh, the university is university people are visiting university committee is visiting. That is, Sanu, some books purchase current the requirement. And what do we do? We simply buy those books and. Uh, buy those very pretty books, maybe probably one day before the visit of that affiliation committee. This won't do in, in this very pretty situation. So you, you cannot include the computer which you buy after the latest completed academic year. Okay, so that has to be looked at. Agar aapka uh, latest academic year is 21-22, so whatever computer uh, you purchase during uh, the data academic year are to be counted. And after that, if you are buying maybe hundreds of computer, those won't make any difference in your data. Clear? So takeaways are computers meant only for students are to be given. Another takeaway is you need to highlight uh, adequately uh, the procurement of those very particular computer in the shape of uh, uh, the invoices and uh, entry into the stock registers. And, and the very important takeaway is data pertaining to the latest completed academic year is to be given only. Clear? So the next uh, and the last one is maintenance of campus infrastructure. Now, uh, augmentation is, is, is very important, but maintenance of existing uh, infrastructure is perhaps more important. Now, uh, we, we have classroom, but it is not in a proper shape. For example, uh, the plaster is coming off, the roof is leaking, uh, the floors are uh, uh, not good enough. Is it, is it going to help you? Is it going to give you give the learner a congenial or a proper environment to sit and uh, study? Not really. It is necessary that the institution has sufficient resources allocated for regular upkeep of the infrastructure. And there are effective mechanisms for the upkeep of infrastructure facility. Okay. Now the takeaway from 4.4.4.4 is regular maintenance, periodic replenishment of infrastructure, upkeep of infrastructure and mechanism for the upkeep. Okay, mechanism here would mean that do you have a committee which supervises it and how frequently they, they meet? Uh, is there any feedback system available? Is there any register which you maintain to note down uh, those deficiencies uh, of infrastructure? And if there is a, feed, uh, a feedback system or a particular register which is maintained, who supervises it? Uh, how fast the things are uh, repaired or taken care of? So all those things are to be looked into. So uh, again, 4.4.1, uh, it is a, uh, a quantitative one only. Okay, not a qualitative one. Write up me, then I may. They just are no figures, then you have percentage of expenditure incurred on maintenance of infrastructure. Percentage. Okay, physical and academic support facility, excluding uh, salary, 
component during the last five years, this is to be given. So how do we find out the percentage? Total expenditure incurred on maintenance of infrastructure ex excluding salary divided with the total expenditure exclude, excluding salary. Just like uh, component 4.1, there we, we highlighted the total expenditure on augmentation of uh, infrastructure. Here we are giving simply the expenditure on maintenance of infrastructure. Okay, so again, uh, what need to be uh, given, this is uh, uh, in which format is to be given, Wolf, uh, that format is similar to uh, 4.1.2, uh, which we discussed earlier. I'll just go back and uh, this is a format. This format is same for 4.1.2 and 4.4.1 budget allocated, expenditure, expenditure for infrastructure augmentation. So your third column is meant for 4.1.2 and your, uh, 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 you can say the, uh, the fifth column uh, is, which is expenditure on maintenance of physical facility is meant for your 4.4.1. Okay, but the, but the format is same, clear? So, uh, SOPs. Again, uh, the same kind of SOPs. Provide audited income and expenditure statement, highlighting the item of expenditure incurred on maintenance of physical facility. I think I have already covered this part when we were discussing physical facilities. Uh, again, the same kind of uh, requirement. It has to be uh, duly certified by the head of the institution and chartered accountant. Uh, it simply means that uh, audited statement are to be provided. Focus of this metric is only on maintenance of physical and academic support facilities. Uh, physical and academic support facility here would mean any kind of uh, infrastructure which is meant for uh, academic and curricular and co-curricular co -curricular, uh, facilities. Mere statement of last five year data on metric without audited statement will not be considered. This has to be ensured. Aud audited statement has to be given, audited one. Okay, so the, uh, now why they are asking for audited? Because uh, audited statement, audit is done by some third party. The data is more authentic and uh, more relevant. So in order to ensure authenticity only, NAC is uh, insisting on audited, audited statements only. So uh, I think I've covered all those four sub parts, 4.1 physical facilities, uh, library as a learning resources, IT infrastructure, maintenance of campus infrastructure. So uh, I, I suppose, uh, uh, now, if you have certain question, I'll be able to answer. Thank you, sir. Thank you for the uh, this session. If any kind of queries are there, the participants can ask. Fine. Uh, thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much for such a wonderful and informative session. I think uh, all the doubts of the colleges have been cleared. Thank you for being being so uh, elaborative in the session. Uh, thank you very thank much. You, thank, you. Uh, thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, moving to the next uh, criterion. Uh, the next criterion we are going to explain is criteria five. Uh, that is student sport and progression. This criteria will be explained by Dr. Kushwinder Singh. Dr. Kushwinder Singh, Principal, Multani Man Moti College, Patiala. He is a, he also a very vast experience in the NAC accreditation process. And I request uh, uh, Dr. Kushwinder to please uh, proceed further. Uh, sir, uh, you, are you available? Uh, yes, thank you very much. Dr. Amitoj, am I allowed to share, share uh, my screen? Yes, uh, Pradeep, uh, can, can you stop sharing your screen so that uh, Dr. Kushwinder can share his screen? Just a second, sir. I'm 
Shundar sir, can you share your screen? Just check check it out. Maybe uh, it will be automatically it, disconnected. It, it need the first screen to be discontinued, which okay. is already. Uh, Dr. Walia, I am request to kindly. Yes, sir. Uh, I am trying to do that, sir. Just give me a one second. Uh, I have, uh, with your permission, I have this allowed. Okay, uh, okay. Uh, sir, uh, please check if you can now share your screen. Yes, sir, I'm, I'm sharing. Uh, I yeah. hope my screen yeah, is visible. It's, it's, it's visible, sir. Yes. Uh, right, Ji, thank you very much. Uh, I appreciate the efforts of uh, the Department of Higher Education, State Government, and Punjab State Open University for this initiative. Uh, permit me to start with. Uh, <coughs> Uh, I will prefer to share, start with uh, just a uh, brief concept of the quality because it is required uh, to discuss what is expected under criteria five, which I'm going to discuss. Uh, it was uh, uh, Dellers, Jacker Dellers report, uh, learning the treasures within the UNESCO report, which talked about the four pillars of learning. These four pillars are before you, learning to learn, learning to do, learning to live together, and learning to be. This report has many reflections uh, for last about 20 years. And majority of the uh, reflections are of the same opinion uh, that these uh, four phases are interdependent and interpenetrative and support each other. So uh, they should be treated or they may be treated as uh, the basic principles for our teaching learning or any education system that uh, is posed uh, to promote teaching learning. Uh, when, I, when I say that they interpenetrate, we usually, uh, our system is main focused upon learning to learn and to some extent on learning to do. The other two, uh, which are in, uh, there are three domains of learning, cognitive, uh, effective, and psychomotor. We rarely touch uh, the second domain, effective domain. But now NEP 2020 has major emphasis on this domain also. Uh, that is why the terms like cross-cutting issues, generic competencies, integration across the subject areas and learning domains, these are the focus of NEP 2020. And this continuum or the four pillars, when I say they are interconnected and interpenetrative, they basically allow all these uh, conceptual uh, of cross-cutting or uh, generic competencies or learning across the subjects and the learning domains. Uh, coming to Indian ethos, we usually, uh, if I translate it into Indian terms, uh, a human, a civic human being, as per a democratic culture, need to be informed, then cultured, then em uh, emancipated. Now, informed is related with learning to learn uh, less or more. And to be cultured, uh, it includes at least three domains now, first, second, third, interpenetrative once again. When we say emancipated, Emancipated usually go up to the last domain, uh, last pillar, fourth pillar, learning to be. And self-actualized perhaps is the highest uh, uh, position to be attained by any uh, human being as per uh, the Indian ethos. So now how to be achieved? It, it was basically, I uh, try to build a thesis but is the broader objective of higher education, it might be through any of the stream, any of the program, what or what type of human being we wish to construct. Uh, pardon, uh, I will prefer the mixed language because I know most of uh, the faculty is bilingual, uh, Punjabi and uh, English. If there is any objection, uh, let me know, otherwise I'll be bilingual. So am I permitted to be bilingual? 
जी सर राइट सो इफ आई हैव टू ट्रांसलेट एज पर आर लोकल लैंग्वेज हायर एजुकेशन का साडा ब्रॉडर उद्देश्य जोड़ा है वो एक बहुत वीया उसारू शख्सियत घड़ना है उस उसारू शख्सियत जी सैल्फ एक्चुअलाइज हो गए सैल्फ एक्चुअलाइजेन तक पहुंचे वो सू अकेडमिक के नाल बहुत सारिया को अकेडमिक को करीकुलर एक्टिविटीज सू दे पैनगियां जिदे इफेक्टिव डोमेन जिड़ी के साथ एक हाफ ऑफ ब्रेन के रिलेट होंगी है उस तो बिना असं अटेन नहीं कर सकते बाय नाउ यू आर वैल अवेयर दैट देर आर सैवन क्राइटीरिया थर्टी टू की इंडीकेटर्स एंड फिफ्टी फाइव मैट्रिस against which are qualities to be assessed by lab my focus is about uh, the criteria 5 and criteria 5 have uh, four key indicators and nine uh, matrices eight of these nine matrices are quantitative and only one is qualitative uh, let me make uh, myself more clear when i say qualitative तो उस दे साडे तो रिजड नुमेरिक कैलकुलेशन इन ए टैंपलेट नहीं डिमांड की जाती रादर वो एक रिटर्न रो नोट साढ़े प्रोसैस प्रोसीजर से आउटकम का असी देना होंगे इस नॉ द फिफ्थ क्राइटीरिया कैरीज ए वेट इज ऑफ वन फोर्टी मार्क्स विच इज़ फर्दर डिवै डिवाइड अंडर फोर की इंडीकेटर्स टू फाइव पॉइंट वन एंड फाइव point 3 having the major weight is of 50 each another thing we need to concentrate on this criteria after the second criteria teaching learning which was uh, taken by uh, uh, dr ekta hosla very beautifully two days earlier because the maximum weight is more than 1/3 35% is given to teaching learning and the second highest weight is has been given to student sport एंड प्रोग्रैशन सो सा अज का मकसद यह समझना है कि स्टूडेंट सपोर्ट प्रोग्रैशन हैगी की है दूसरी गल वो किस तरह असं बढ़ा सकते हैं तीसरी गल किस तरह असी बैटर रिपोर्ट कर सकते हैं मेरी समझ ये तीन चीज़ा आदिया ने अपना इन्ह तिना रिफलैक्ट करा जिस तरह पहला डिस्कस किया गल कर चुके हैं मैं कि चार साढ़े को इस की एरियाज ने फस्ट है स्टूडेंट सपोर्ट स्टूडेंट सपोर्ट का मतलब all that financial and non financial support given to the student financial we all know government ja ngos de rahi hovegi non financial jehdi assi academic de taur te dinne hai us di capacities us de skills enhance karan layi us di capabilities enhance karan de layi jo assi dinne hai oh sariyan vakhriyan vakhriyan assi is de vich lavange जिद न स्टूडेंट दर्निंग डिस डिफिकल्टीज असं अंडरसटैंड करते हैं उसू स्किल बेस्ड या वैल्यू एडिड कोर्सिज दें स्किल वैल्यू बड़ा जरूरी है समझना जिथे तक स्किल बेस वाली गल है स्किल्स थोड़े तो यूजली देर आर थ्री डोमेन्स ऑफ लर्निंग लर्निंग डोमेन्स मैं सैकोलॉजी ऑफ लर्निंग रैफर कर रहा है गिवन बाई बेंजम इन बलूम थ्री डोमेन्स ने कोगनेटिव इफेक्टिव एंड सैकोमोटर कोगनेटिव जी सा ब्रेन एक्टिविटीज डायरैक्टली जगनेटिव वो रिलेटड ने दूसरी साड़िया भावनाव जिन्होंने असं कुछ कह दें उन्होंने वैल्यूज ने तीसरी साड़िया मोटर एबिलिटीज ने जो तो असं वैल्यू एडड कोर्सिज कहने इन का मेन एम्फेसिस इफेक्टिव डोमेन से है एम्पथी कि दे रहे हैं अंडरसटैंडिंग अदर कल्चर कि रहे हैं एक्सैप्टेंस ऑफ द अदर सिविक रिस्पोंसिबिलिटीज और द राइट्स ऑफ द अदर सिविक मैंबरस कि दे रहे हैं वो साड़ी उस डोमेन च आगे वेयर एज अ स्किल इज मोर रेफर्ड टू द कोगनेटिव डोमेन और द सैकोमोटर डोमेन सो ये गल क्लीयर होना बड़ा क्योंकि क्वेश्चन अक्सर जो भी गल करते हैं पूछा जाता है जी असी वैल्यू एडड कोर्स कि कह रही है तो स्किल एनहांसड कोर्स किनू कही है? सो मेरा कलाम क्लीयर मैं ये बहुत टाइम नहीं लै सकता अदरवाइज डोमेन्स थ्री डोमेन्स ऑफ लर्निंग समझ सू एक सैशन पूरा चाहिए यू कैन रेफर इट फ्रॉम नैट सो पहला असं फाइनैशियल सपोर्ट की गल करिए है किमें बधानी है किमें रिपोर्ट करनी है असी स्टूडेंट्स न जिनी भी तरह के गौरमेंट के नॉन गौरमेंट एजेंसीज तो फैसिलीटेट करके कोई फाइनैशियल सपोर्ट दें उन्हद्यार्थियों जेड़े फाइनांस कर शायद अपनी 
ਐਜੂਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਕੰਟੀਨਿਊ ਨਾ ਕਰ ਸਕਣ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਲਈ ਅਸੀਂ ਕੀ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਦੇ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਐਸ ਵੈਲ ਐਸ ਨਾਨ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਦੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਚ ਪੋਰਟਲ ਆਲਰੇਡੀ ਚੱਲ ਚੁੱਕਿਆ ਹੈ ਤੁਹਾਨੂੰ ਸਭ ਨੂੰ ਪਤਾ ਹੈ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਸਕਾਲਰਸ਼ਿਪ ਸਕੀਮਸ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਹੈ ਐਸਸੀ ਸਕਾਲਰਸ਼ਿਪਸ ਹੈ ਮਾਈਨੋਰਿਟੀ ਸਕਾਲਰਸ਼ਿਪ ਹੈ ਮੈਰਿਟ ਕਮ ਮੀਨਸ ਸਕਾਲਰਸ਼ਿਪਸ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਇਹ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਕਰਨਾ ਬੜਾ ਮੁਸ਼ਕਿਲ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਸੀ ਪਰ ਅੱਜ ਕੱਲ ਅਪਲਾਈ ਹੀ ਇਹ ਪੋਰਟਲ ਤੇ ਹੋ ਰਹੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਸੋ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਪੋਰਟਲ ਤੇ ਫੈਸਿਲੀਟੇਟ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਅਪਲਾਈ ਕਰਨ ਲਈ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਨੂੰ ਉਹ ਸਾਡਾ ਰੋਲ ਆ ਗਿਆ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਇੱਥੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਨੰਬਰ ਮੰਗਣਾ ਹੈ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਸ਼ੀਟ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਨੰਬਰ ਆਫ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ 50 ਸਾਲਾਂ ਚ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਟੋਟਲ ਸੀ ਕਿੰਨਿਆਂ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਸਕਾਲਰਸ਼ਿਪਸ ਦਾ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਲਿਆ ਦੂਸਰੀ ਗੱਲ ਉਸ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਨਾਲ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕੀ ਕਿਸੇ ਐਨਜੀਓ ਨਾਲ ਟਾਈ ਅਪ ਹੋ ਜਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਇੱਕ ਰੈੱਡ ਕਰਾਸ ਫੰਡ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਰੈੱਡ ਕਰਾਸ ਫੰਡ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇੱਕ ਪਰਟੀਕੂਲਰ ਲਿਮਟ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸਕਾਲਰਸ਼ਿਪ ਹੈ ਫ੍ਰੀ ਸ਼ਿਪਸ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਨੂੰ ਦੇ ਸਕਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਨਾਓ ਇਟ ਇਜ਼ ਅਪ ਟੂ ਅਸ ਫੋਰ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮਪਲ ਉਹ ਲਿਮਟ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ 50000 ਬਣ ਗਈ ਜੇ ਉਹ 50000 ਲਿਮਟ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਉਹ 50000 ਕੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਪੰਜ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ 10 10000 ਦੇਤੀ ਜਾਂ 10 ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ 5 5000 ਦੇਤੀ ਇਟ ਡਿਪੈਂਡਸ ਅਪਨ ਯੂ ਸਾਡਾ ਨੰਬਰ ਤੇ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਸ਼ਰੀ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਵੱਧਦੇ ਹੈ ਇਹਨੇ ਉਹ ਕੈਲਕੂਲੇਟ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੈ ਫਾਰਮੂਲਾ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਐਨਜੀਓਸ ਉਹਦੇ ਤੋਂ ਇਲਾਵਾ ਹੋਰ ਕੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਹੋਰ ਐਨਜੀਓ ਨਾਲ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਅਲੂਮਨੀ ਕੋਈ ਇੱਕ ਦੋ ਚਾਰ ਨੂੰ ਦੇ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਕੀ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਕੋਈ ਲੋਕਲ ਇਹੋ ਜੀ ਜਥੇਬੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਇੱਕ ਦੋ ਚਾਰ ਸਕਾਲਰਸ਼ਿਪਸ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਦੇਣ ਨੂੰ ਤਿਆਰ ਹੈ ਕੀ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਕੋਈ ਰਿਟਾਇਰੀ ਟੀਚਰ ਜਾਂ ਕੋਈ ਉਹਦੀ ਫੈਮਿਲੀ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਦਿੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਇੱਕ ਹੋਰ ਪ੍ਰੈਕਟਿਸ ਮੈਂ ਨੋਟ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਸਾਡੇ ਕਾਲਜ ਵੀ ਹੈ ਮੈਂ ਜਿੰਨੇ ਕਾਲਜਾਂ ਚ ਸਰਵਿਸ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਸਾਰਿਆਂ ਚ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਸੀ ਸੈਸ਼ਨ ਐਂਡ ਤੱਕ ਜਦੋਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਬੱਚੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਪਤਾ ਲੱਗਦਾ ਜੀ ਇਹ ਤਾਂ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਛੱਡ ਰਿਹਾ ਇਹਦੇ ਕੋਲ ਪੈਸੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਇਸ ਲਈ ਆਇਆ ਨਹੀਂ ਤਾਂ ਯੂਜ਼ਲੀ ਸਾਡਾ ਸਟਾਫ ਆਪਣੇ ਕੋਲੋਂ ਕੰਟਰੀਬਿਊਟ ਕਰਕੇ ਵੀ ਉਹਦੀ ਹੈਲਪ ਕਰ ਦਿੰਦਾ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਉਹਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਰਿਕਾਰਡ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਇਹਨੂੰ ਔਨ ਰਿਕਾਰਡ ਲਿਆਉਣਾ ਚਾਹੀਦਾ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਵੀ ਸਾਡੀ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੀ ਪ੍ਰੈਕਟਿਸ ਚੱਲ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਸੋ ਇਹ ਪਰਸੈਂਟੇਜ ਮੈਟਰ ਹੈ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਟੋਟਲ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟ ਨੇ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਆਨੂੰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਫੈਸਿਲਿਟੇਟ ਕਰਵਾਤਾ ਡਾਕੂਮੈਂਟ ਕੀ ਕੀ ਚਾਹੀਦੇ ਨੇ ਕਲੇਮ ਲਈ ਅਦਰਵਾਈਜ਼ ਇਹ ਕਲੇਮ ਸਾਡਾ ਇੰਟਾਈਟਲਡ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੋਊਗਾ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹਦਾ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਨਹੀਂ ਲੈ ਸਕਾਂਗੇ ਵੀ ਨੀਡ ਏ ਸੈਂਕਸ਼ਨ ਲੈਟਰ ਕਿਹੜੇ ਕਿਹੜੇ ਗਵਰਨਮੈਂਟ ਸਕਾਲਰਸ਼ਿਪਸ ਸੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਰਿਕਾਰਡ ਹੋਵੇ ਸੈਂਕਸ਼ਨ ਲੈਟਰ ਹੋਵੇ ਈਅਰ ਵਾਈਜ਼ ਲਿਸਟ ਹੋਵੇ ਤੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਡੀਵੀਵੀ ਦੇ ਟਾਈਮ ਸਾਡਾ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਥੈਂਟਿਕ ਪ੍ਰੂਫ ਅਪਲੋਡ ਕਰਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਹੋਵੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕੋਈ ਗੈਪ ਹੈ ਜੇ ਡੀਵੀਵੀ ਦੇ ਟਾਈਮ ਉਹ ਡਿਮਾਂਡ ਕੀਤਾ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਪ੍ਰੋਵਾਈਡ ਕਰ ਸਕਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਸੋ ਇਟ ਇਜ਼ ਦ ਐਕਸਲ ਸ਼ੀਟ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਅਲੋਂਗ ਵਿਦ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਹੋਈ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਸ਼ੀਟ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਈਅਰ ਵਾਈਜ਼ ਨੰਬਰ ਆਫ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟਡ ਕਿਹੜੀ ਕਿਹੜੀ ਕੈਟਾਗਰੀ ਚ ਨੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਪ੍ਰੂਫ ਦਾ ਲਿੰਕ ਅਸੀਂ ਅਪਲੋਡ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਦੂਸਰਾ ਹੁਣ ਨਾਨ ਫਾਈਨੈਂਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਇਸ਼ੂਜ਼ ਤੇ ਅਗਰ ਆਈਏ ਤਾਂ ਨਾਨ ਫਾਈਨੈਂਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਮੈਂ ਗੱਲ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਉਹ 
ਇਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਵੀ ਕੋਈ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਐਗਜ਼ਿਸਟਿੰਗ ਸਾਡੇ ਕਾਲਜ ਦਾ ਇਨਫਰਾਸਟ੍ਰਕਚਰ ਓਬਵੀਅਸ ਵੀ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਯੂਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਆਰ ਐਗਜ਼ਿਸਟਿੰਗ ਇਨਫਰਾਸਟ੍ਰਕਚਰ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ ਇਟ ਇਜ਼ ਨਾਟ ਪੋਸੀਬਲ ਟੂ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਟ ਅ ਨਿਊ ਇਨਫਰਾਸਟ੍ਰਕਚਰ ਫॉर ਈਚ ਐਂਡ ਐਵਰੀ ਸੱਚ ਅ ਸਮਾਲ ਕੋਰਸ ਔਰ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਉਸ ਲਈ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਆਰ ਯੂਜ਼ਿੰਗ ਦਾ ਲੈਂਗੁਏਜ ਲੈਬ ਸਮ ਸਮਾਰਟ ਕਲਾਸਰੂਮ ਸਮ ਆਈਸੀਟੀ ਫੈਸਿਲਿਟੀਜ਼ ਸਮ ਫੈਸਿਲਿਟੀ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਟਡ ਫॉर ਆਨਲਾਈਨ ਲਰਨਿੰਗ ਐਕਸੈਟਰਾ ਦੇ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਔਰ ਮੇ ਬੀ ਇਨਕਲੂਡਡ ਇਨ ਥੀਸ ਫੈਸਿਲਿਟੀਜ਼ so mer a circular single cannot be uh, considered as a claim or proof similarly again in this excel sheet you will be providing uh, uh, the list for last 5 years which are the courses or programs which are the programs uh, which you are giving uh, the e proofs of uh, their curriculum circular etc and the number of uh, students enrolled date wise and the completion and the certificates given to the students at the completion of the course all these records have to be supplied along with the list again coming to student support it is the part of academic once again uh, <coughs> the academic uh, uh, support apart from Uh, the part of uh, the curriculum why it is so for last about 10 years many of the research reports and the analysis or reports by our uh, statutory bodies reported uh, that instead of unemployability unemployment is also a major concern for us and while reflecting and analyzing the unemployability of the youth it has been accepted and which has been endorsed along with acceptance in nep 2020 also that perhaps there are wider gaps in the two things one uh, what type of curriculum we are providing and secondly what is accepted what type of skills are expected in the market to to be an employable person employable person so to fill this gap what type of guidance or and or counseling we are providing to the students now it may be of various types uh, means for enhancement of their skill or capability to get placement or to start entrepreneur or their own entrepreneur or start up these are to be included so this uh, uh, say uh, this excel sheet demands uh, the guidance is provided to them for competition exams for other competition exams counseling for their future life opening of opportunities for their future life etc so the total uh, in most of the rubrics you calculate your total strength and the facilitated number of students ratio of the facilitated number of students to the total number of students multiply 100 so in a way nac except or net expect sorry net expect we facilitate each and every student for academic or the capacity enhancement during the course of their 3 to 4 years pav asi unna nu 3 ya 4 saal de vich kise jagah te is tarah nal facilitate zarur karde ha now again how to report it the circulars brochures the program details of the program and uh, uh, the outcomes fixed of the program uh, and the list geo tagged photos all are to be reported along with our claim uh, when we say the number of students benefited by your uh, guidance for competitive exams it doesn't mean that how many have qualified it means how many we have registered for Uh, guidance to competitive exams and they have completed uh, our guidance course for competition exam for example we are uh, coaching the students for cat for mat for uh, net examination etc etc so all those students who have been enrolled and they have completed our program for this now it may be a uh, say one day program by some external person it may be 5 to 10 hours program of uh, one week it may be 20 to 30 hours program or it may be a program of 100 hours spread over a period of 3 or 4 months so it depends each and every such effort 
is accepted for example suppose we are only creating a, a mock interview uh, sessions for one day or we are arranging a workshop on your cv writing even they can be included for single day only again it is to be reported in uh, the excel sheet supplied along with uh, but obviously as all the documents are to be uploaded and the link is to be given as an evidence along with uh, the last subcomponent of the first one is student grievances. In student grievances, it is expected that we will be complying with all uh, the requirements of the statutory bodies. There are four, four steps. First step is implementation of guidelines of all statutory bodies. For example, the anti lagging cell, women grievance redressal cell. Uh, grievance of uh, uh, discrimination um, against some category or class. So all such statutory bodies are in place and exist in the college and they are regularly working, their meetings are regular and they are conducting their regular sessions. Secondly, we, we are uh, making the students aware of these type of uh, uh, grievance redressal process and mechanism to all the students, which basically reflect our uh, almost no tolerance towards such discriminations against uh, women, um, uh, ragging, et cetera, et cetera. Thirdly, the mechanism of registering the grievance, whether it is online or offline, preferably it is expected online in these days. And last one, that how this loop of uh, forming a body, intimating or making uh, the youth or the students aware, providing them a platform for registering their grievances, and lastly, how we close the loop, how that grievance has been closed and bit between uh, within how many uh, with time limit timeline ki asi lagbhag is nu ik hafte ch is nu asi 3 din ch is nu 1 month de vich asi us nu clinch kar denge and this closure should be reflected then and there sadi policy bani hove committee bani hove policy bani hove mechanism us policy de vich defined hove asi time and again awareness sessions students nu dinde rahiye ਤੇ ਜਦੋਂ ਗ੍ਰੀਵਾਂਸ ਰਜਿਸਟਰ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਕਿਹਦੇ ਕੋਲ ਜਾਏਗਾ ਉਹਨੇ ਕਿੰਨੀ ਦੇਰ ਚ ਉਹ ਤੇ ਰਿਫਲੈਕਟ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੈ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਰਿਫਲੈਕਸ਼ਨ ਤੇ ਡਿਸੀਜਨ ਆਇਆ ਉਹ ਡਿਸੀਜਨ ਕਮਿਊਨੀਕੇਟ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸਫਰਰ ਸੀ ਰਜਿਸਟਰ ਕਰਨ ਵਾਲਾ ਸੀ ਗ੍ਰੀਵਾਂਸ ਦਾ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਸਮੇਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹ ਇੰਟੀਮੇਟ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਆਲ ਥੀਸ ਆਰ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਕੰਪਲੀਟਡ ਜਦੋਂ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਕਰੋਗੇ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੱਲੀ ਕਮੇਟੀ ਬਣਾਈ ਹੈ ਜੀ ਜਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਤੇ ਅਵੇਅਰਨੈਸ ਦੀ ਗੱਲ ਵੀ ਕਰਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਦੂਸਰਾ ਸਟੈਪ ਹੋ ਗਿਆ ਤੀਸਰਾ ਸਟੈਪ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਲਈ ਆਨਲਾਈਨ ਆਫਲਾਈਨ ਪਲੈਟਫਾਰਮ ਵੀ ਦੇ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਆਮ ਤੌਰ ਤੇ ਜਦੋਂ ਰੈਫਰ ਬੈਕ ਕਰਾਂ ਮੈਂ 15 20 ਸਾਲ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਿਰਫ ਸੁਜੈਸ਼ਨ ਬਾਕਸ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਆਫਲਾਈਨ ਮੋਡ ਹੈ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟ ਗ੍ਰੀਵਾਂਸ ਰੈਡਰਸ ਦਾ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਕੀ ਸੁਜੈਸ਼ਨ ਬਾਕਸ ਡੇਲੀ ਬੇਸ ਤੇ ਓਪਨ ਕਰਦਾ ਹੈ ਕੌਣ ਕਰਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੋਈ ਸੁਜੈਸ਼ਨ ਜਾਂ ਗ੍ਰੀਵਾਂਸ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਆ ਉਹ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਕਿਵੇਂ ਰੈਡਰਸ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਕਿੰਨੀ ਦੇਰ ਚ ਰੈਡਰਸ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਇਹ ਫੋਰਥ ਚੀਜ਼ ਆ ਮੈਂ ਪਹਿਲਾਂ ਹੀ ਕਹਿ ਚੁੱਕਿਆ ਹਾਂ ਕਿ ਅੱਜ ਕੱਲ ਪ੍ਰੈਫਰਡ ਇਹ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਆਨਲਾਈਨ ਉਹ ਗ੍ਰੀਵਾਂਸ ਦੇਣ ਦਾ ਚਾਂਸ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਜਾਵੇ now how to report it if we have constituted a committee as per the requirements of uh, the committee or of the statutory bodies then uh, we have to report and authenticate the functioning of such committees ki unna diya minutes meetings hundiyan ne regular hundiyan ne kinni periodicity baad hundiyan ne unna de minutes minutes record kite jande ne unna diya review meetings hundiyan ne oh minutes end de vich conclude and closing hundi hai ਤੇ ਸਾਡਾ ਰੀਡਰੈਸਲ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕਨਕਲੂਜਨ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਸਮੇਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਹੋ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਸਾਰਾ ਕੁਝ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਕਰਨਾ ਪਏਗਾ ਤਾਂ ਹੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹਦਾ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਐਡਵਾਂਟੇਜ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਵੀ ਕੈਨ ਏਬਲ ਟੂ ਅਕਰੂ ਦਾ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਨੈਕਸਟ ਇਜ਼ ਸੈਕੰਡ ਕ੍ਰਾਈਟੇਰੀਆ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟ ਸੌਰੀ ਫਰਸਟ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰੈਸ਼ਨ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰੈਸ਼ਨ ਇਜ਼ ਯੂਜ਼ਲੀ ਦਾ ਵਰਟੀਕਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰੈਸ਼ਨ from one type of course to other ug to pg from 
सर्टिफिकेट कोर्स टू डिप्लोमा कोर्स डिप्लोमा कोर्स टू एडवांस डिप्लोमा कोर्स फ्रॉम थ्री ईयर कोर्स टू अपग्रेडेशन टू द फोर ईयर अंडर ग्रेजुएट कोर्स और फ्रॉम यू जी टू पी जी और फ्रॉम पी जी टू रिसर्च और गेटिंग ए जॉब और प्लेसमेंट और योर ओन एंटरप्रेनरशिप आफ्टर कंप्लीशन ऑफ एनी ऑफ द प्रोग्राम नो प्रोग्राम वेन आई रेफर इट मीन अंडर ग्रेजुएट प्रोग्राम पोस्ट ग्रेजुएट प्रोग्राम सर्टिफिकेट कोर्स डिप्लोमा कोर्स बिटेपर माइट बी इट इज रेफर्ड एज प्रोग्राम सो आफ्टर कंप्लीशन ऑफ द प्रोग्राम how many of your students have been uh, have been completed the process and got a job or got placement so progression uh, this this has been already discussed uh, it also include the process of facilitation for this progression whether you have certain uh, placement cell and whether you have certain uh, uh, cell or mechanism who train the students who develop develop the capability of the students to be placed as i already gave an example do we have a mechanism of uh, uh, arranging a demos and uh, workshops for uh, mock interviews for cv writing etc etc uh, for opportunities after a particular stream particular program all these Uh, are considered as the facilitation pro process for progression so what is our uh, plan policy plan for this and how we execute this policy it is to be uh, given and reflected upon it the data sheet will calculate the percentage of students progressed to higher education 50 saalan de vich kinne student ek course complete karke agle ch chale gaye वन ईयर कोर्स टू ईयर कोर्स थ्री ईयर कोर्स वेन आई रेफरिंग देर माइट बी समी वोक कोर्सिज और एनी अदर कोर्सिज हू हैव मल्टीपल एंट्री एग्जिट सिस्टम लैट मी मेक इट क्लीयर दैट एज पर एन ई पी ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी वी हैव टू स्विच ओवर इन मेजोरिटी ऑफ द केसिज टू दिस मल्टीपल एंट्री एग्जिट टाइप ऑफ प्रोग्राम्स वन ईयर देन मे बी सर्टिफिकेट देन मे बी सेकेंड ईयर इन Uh, diploma third year in advanced diploma fourth year degree so even it is considered as a progression that uh, now now the expectation once again of the quality measurement is suppose a student join a one year certificate course now either he or she will be self employed or uh, will get some earning or he or she will be uh, say progressing to the second year of that stream Uh, in uh, in the uh, diploma course after the certificate course so on for all the courses uh, <clears throat> so in this uh, again uh, the sheet has been given where we have to provide the details you know what what uh, how we have to report the, uh, uh, our outcome or our achievement as an institute for placement of outgoing students we have to report the list of students who have been placed and we have to provide their supporting data relating to placement or any progression uh, in 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 the form of say the data what is required their appointment orders and uh, and uh, the agency which has appointed them it, it is required मोहम्मद फ्रांस डू यू हैव एनी क्वेरी प्लीज ओके माइक ऑन हो गया थैंक यू सो द प्रूफ ऑफ ऑल सच लेटर्स इफ ए स्टूडेंट हैज बीन प्लेस्ड द अपॉइंटमेंट लेटर including the salary package etc is to be given as an evidence if the student has progressed to one course to the higher course then uh, his uh, roll number or his uh, uh, say admission letter is to be supplied along with uh, the data sheet only then it is accepted another precaution if a student get multiple offer letters during the campus placement 
in in a, in his or her final year then these multiples suppose five offers has been given to a single candidate by various uh, in during various placement uh, uh, efforts uh, by the college so they these will not be considered as five it will be considered as single only because the beneficiary is single why because he or she will be able to accept only one out of the five not not cannot take all the five uh, so it is it will be treated it will be counted as single only better you avoid reporting the multiple selections of a single candidate better you prefer uh, to report only one which has been accepted by that or in which he or she has joined or where he or she get the maximum pack package only that is to be uh, reported over there second sub component along with this for what type of national or international or state level uh, examinations or competitions we are facilitating that firstly whether we are uh, arranging some coachings or some special sessions for training to cat gmat gate clat gre etc and if we are then we had already reported in the previous program now this uh, sheet demands exactly the number of students who have qualified not appeared who have qualified in these type of examinations only those will be uh, uh, are expected to be reported and only those will be accepted who get benefit and has qualified and as an evidence their result link is to be uploaded or their result certificate qualifying certificate either of the two whichever is uh, relevant in that um, is to be reported uh, what is the precaution so um, uh, in absence of the proof as a certificate or link of result no claim will be considered secondly the examinations conducted uh, as a screening to uh, to to employment to any job uh, as uh, recently some jobs has been created by state of punjab and the first step is the qualifying the written examination then second one may be another step third one may be interview so merely qualifying this type of examination by state cannot be claimed it will not be accepted whether it is by uh, the government or any uh, central or state government bodies uh, so in this excel sheet against each uh, say competition national level competition uh, the student is to be reported his or her registration number or the roll number is to be reported and a proof of the examination is to be added in the last column so merely our list and our claim that so and so student qualified will not be accepted we need to provide his result proof as an evidence i hope i am clear about it coming to uh, the third indicator key participation and activities the first criteria was of 50 marks this third one is again of 50 marks so we need to be very uh, aware uh, much aware of it very much uh, uh, weightage is to be given so we need to be very conscious of it now what is the student participation uh, i begin with the concept of quality that for harmonious development which is our objective student need to develop uh, along with the cognitive or say the academic the co academic faculties of one's brain also all those co academic faculties are to be considered in it and all those activities which are supposed to enhance those capabilities are to include in it and the success or achievement of the student in all those activities is to be reported as an evidence of outcome of our institute of our effort as an institute now which are these i have already mentioned now why it is so once again i'm taking one or two minutes it basically reflect our inclusiveness 
of the society and of the social justice and to develop the relationship and fraternity feeling among this to the community secondly it can nurture to our ethos and the culture and values through participation and promotion of these activities thirdly it uh, it uh, develops so many values uh, of the individual like discipline uh, value in your co participants or peers uh, etc or development of the skills these these are to be developed during the activities main jadon ye gal keh reha mera khayal main bahut hi colleagues mere is gal nal sehmat honge ki jadon assi kise student nu nss camp ch le jande hain kise excursion tour te le jande hain ਕਿਸੇ ਗਰੁੱਪ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀਜ਼ ਪਾਰਟਿਸਿਪੇਟ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਤਾਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਦੋਂ ਬੱਚੇ ਬਾਰੇ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਬਿਹਤਰ ਜਾਣ ਸਕਦੇ ਆ ਐਜ਼ ਕੰਪੇਅਰ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਇਨ ਦਾ ਕਲਾਸਰੂਮ ਮੈਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਐਕਸਪੀਰੀਅੰਸ ਤੋਂ ਕਹਾਂ ਤਾਂ ਕਲਾਸਰੂਮ ਚ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਦੋ ਕੈਟਾਗਰਾਈਜ਼ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਬੱਚੇ ਤੀਜੇ ਇਨ ਬਿਟਵੀਨ ਐਵਰੇਜ ਜਿਹਨੂੰ ਕਹਿੰਦੇ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਰਹਿ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ ਪਹਿਲੇ ਬੱਚੇ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਟੂਡੀਅਸ ਆ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਹਰ ਇੱਕ ਕੁਐਰੀ ਕੁਐਸਚਨ ਤੇ ਰਿਫਲੈਕਟ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਦੂਸਰੀ ਉਹ ਕੈਟਾਗਰੀ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮਿਸਚੀਵੀਅਸ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਜਿਨ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਕਲਾਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਮਿਸਚੀਵਸ ਕਰਨਾ ਡਿਸਟਰੈਕਟ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਉਹ ਬਹੁਤ ਫਰਟਾਈਲ ਤੇ ਕ੍ਰੀਏਟਿਵ ਮਾਈਂਡ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਆ ਸਾਡੀ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਚ ਦੋ ਹੀ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਨੇ ਵਾਈ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਐਕਸਟ੍ਰੀਮਸ ਨੂੰ ਹੀ ਜਲਦੀ ਨੋਟਿਸ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਐਵਰੇਜ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਸਾਡੀ ਨਜ਼ਰ ਚ ਹੀ ਸ਼ਾਇਦ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਇਸ ਲਈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਸਾਡਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਵੱਲ ਕੋਈ ਬਹੁਤ ਜ਼ਿਆਦਾ ਧਿਆਨ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਜਦੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੀ ਕਿਸੇ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀ ਚ ਲੈ ਜਾਂਦੇ ਆ ਇਫ ਇਟਸ ਦਾ ਗਰੁੱਪ ਆਫ ਸੇ 20 ਵੀ ਮਾਈਟ ਬੀ ਨੋਟਿਸਿੰਗ ਆਫ ਆਲ ਦ 20 ਇਨ ਦੈਟ ਗਰੁੱਪ ਸੋ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਅਪਰਚੂਨਿਟੀਆਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਆ ਫਸਟ ਇਜ਼ ਦਾ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਰੂਬਰਿਕ ਹੈ ਮੈਗਰਮੈਂਟ ਦਾ ਥੈਟ ਇਜ਼ ਦ ਅਚੀਵਮੈਂਟਸ ਐਂਡ ਅਪਰੀਸ਼ੀਏਸ਼ਨ ਆਫ ਅਚੀਵਮੈਂਟਸ ਕਿੰਨਿਆਂ ਨੇ ਅਚੀਵਮੈਂਟ ਕੀਤੀ ਮੈਡਲ ਲਈ ਫਸਟ ਸੈਕੰਡ ਥਰਡ ਪੋਜੀਸ਼ਨਸ ਲੈ ਲਈਆਂ ਸੋ ਵੀ ਨੀਡ ਟੂ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਦਾ ਨੰਬਰ ਆਫ ਅਵਾਰਡਸ ਔਰ ਮੈਡਲਸ ਕਿਹੜੇ ਅਵਾਰਡਸ ਮੈਡਲਸ ਵਿਚ ਆਰ ਅਟੇਂਡ ਐਟ ਸਟੇਟ ਔਰ ਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਔਰ ਇੰਟਰਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਲੈਵਲ only those are to be uh, only those are to be reported or which are at lowest at the university level jide assi kahiye state to bhi thalle aa gaye is to ilawa jide hai oh assi ede vich report nahi karange inna level de competitions now for example which are the competitions which are uh, formally organized at all these levels sade youth festival ek example hai sade sports competitions dusri example hai ਥਰਡ ਕਈ ਯੂਨੀਵਰਸਿਟੀਆਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਲੋਕ ਮੇਲਾ ਵਗੈਰਾ ਉਹ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜ਼ ਕਰਦੇ ਆ ਥੀਸ ਆਰ ਅਨਦਰ ਟਾਈਪ ਆਫ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮਪਲਸ ਫੋਰਥ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮਪਲ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਆ ਉਹ ਸਾਡੇ ਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਜਾਂ ਅਦਰ ਲੈਵਲਸ ਤੇ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਦੇ ਆਰ ਐਨਐਸਐਸ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀਜ਼ ਔਰ ਦ ਐਨਸੀਸੀ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀਜ਼ ਮੀਨਸ ਆਲ ਸਚ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀਜ਼ ਵਿਚ ਆਰ ਫਾਰਮਲੀ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜ਼ਡ ਐਂਡ ਕੰਡਕਟਡ ਬਾਈ ਸਰਟਨ ਸਟੈਚੂਟਰੀ ਬੋਡੀਜ਼ ਉਹ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਚ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਮੈਡਲ ਸਾਡੇ ਆ ਗਏ ਉਹ ਮੈਡਲ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ Uh, while reporting these medals uh, uh, we asi uh, jado claim karna hai us claim layi e copies of the award or certificate wo sanu dena padega wo asi upload karange for example ithe ithe bahut vaddi samasya aundi hai main wo zarur share kar lunga for example saadi ik bhangde di team uh, first prize le aayi ja kaho saadi uh, volleyball di team first prize le aayi ਤਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮੈਡਲਸ ਮਿਲਣਗੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਸਰਟੀਫਿਕੇਟ ਮਿਲਣਗੇ ਹੁਣ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲੋਂ ਐਕਸਪੈਕਟਡ ਕੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਸਰਟੀਫਿਕੇਟ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਯੂਨੀਵਰਸਿਟੀ ਨੇ ਦਿੱਤਾ ਜ਼ੋਨਲ ਜਾਂ ਇੰਟਰ ਜ਼ੋਨਲ ਪਾਰਟਿਸਿਪੇਸ਼ਨ ਦਾ ਉਹ ਸਰਟੀਫਿਕੇਟਸ ਅਸੀਂ ਅਪਲੋਡ ਕਰਨਾ ਹੈ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਸਾਡਾ ਪ੍ਰਵੇਲਿੰਗ ਯੂਜੂਅਲੀ ਮੈਕੈਨਿਜ਼ਮ ਕੀ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਸਰਟੀਫਿਕੇਟ ਆਏ ਇੱਕ ਰਜਿਸਟਰ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਕੰਸਰਨਡ ਟੀਚਰ ਇਨਚਾਰਜ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨੇ ਲਿਸਟ ਬਣਾਈ ਕਿਹਦਾ ਕਿਹਦਾ ਸੀ ਉਹਦੇ ਸਾਈਨ ਕਰਾ ਕੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇਸ਼ੂ ਕਰਤੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਸਿਰਫ ਇਹ ਪ੍ਰੂਫ ਹੈ ਗਿਆ
ਜੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਹੁਣ ਗੱਲ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਭੰਗੜੇ ਦੀ ਉਸ ਟੀਮ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ 12 ਮੈਂਬਰ ਨੇ ਜਾਂ 11 ਮੈਂਬਰ ਨੇ ਤਾਂ 11 ਅਵਾਰਡਸ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੋਣਗੇ ਅਗਰ ਫਸਟ ਪੋਜੀਸ਼ਨ ਆ ਗਈ ਚਾਹੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਮੈਡਲ ਜਾਂ ਮੋਮੈਂਟੋ ਕੱਲੇ ਕੱਲੇ ਨੂੰ ਮਿਲ ਗਿਆ ਸਰਟੀਫਿਕੇਟ ਚਾਹੇ ਕੱਲੇ ਕੱਲੇ ਨੂੰ ਮਿਲ ਗਿਆ ਪਰ ਟੀਮ ਅਚੀਵਮੈਂਟ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਉਹ ਇੱਕ ਸਿੰਗਲ ਅਚੀਵਮੈਂਟ ਮੰਨੀ ਜਾਏਗੀ ਅਨਦਰ ਥਿੰਗ ਟੂ ਬੀ ਕੰਸਿਡਰਡ ਇਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਿੰਨੇ ਵੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਲੋਕਲ ਲੈਵਲ ਦੇ ਕੰਪੀਟੀਸ਼ਨਸ ਹੈ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਕਾਲਜ ਲੈਵਲ ਦੇ ਕੰਪੀਟੀਸ਼ਨਸ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਇਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਅਗਰ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਵੀ ਤਾਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਵੀ ਵਿਲ ਨਾਟ ਬੀ ਏਬਲ ਟੂ ਅਗਰੀ ਵਿਦ ਦਾ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਆਫ ਆਲ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਵਾਂਸ ਅਗੇਨ ਦ ਸ਼ੀਟ ਇਜ਼ ਅਵੇਲੇਬਲ ਐਕਸਲ ਸ਼ੀਟ ਜਿਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਹ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਅਚੀਵਮੈਂਟਸ ਸਾਡੀਆਂ ਫਿਲ ਕਰਨੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਇਫ ਯੂ ਹੈਵ ਨੋਟਿਸਡ ਤਾਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਇਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਿਤੇ ਵੀ ਇੰਟਰ ਕਾਲਜ ਕੰਪੀਟੀਸ਼ਨਸ ਨਹੀਂ ਆਏ ਇੰਟਰ ਕਾਲਜ ਕੰਪੀਟੀਸ਼ਨਸ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਆਉਣਗੇ uh all such activities sports cultural any other activities oh jinniyan vi sadiyan uh, which has been organized by our college or by other colleges assi ho report karange lekin ich report ki karange jehdiyan sade students diyan achievements ne aur jahan jinne sade student ohde ch participate karde assi participations ਇਥੇ ਮੈਂਸ਼ਨ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਮੀਨਸ ਦਾ ਆਬਜੈਕਟਿਵ ਇਜ਼ ਥਿਸ ਕਿ ਹਾਈਐਸਟ ਲੈਵਲ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਕੁ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟ ਅਚੀਵ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਕੁ ਨੂੰ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਲੋਐਸਟ ਲੈਵਲ ਤੋਂ ਲਗਭਗ ਹਰ ਇੱਕ ਬੱਚੇ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਤੇ ਨਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਪਾਰਟਿਸਿਪੇਟ ਕਰਾ ਦਿੰਦੇ ਹੋ ਇਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਾਡੀ ਐਕਸਪੈਕਟੇਸ਼ਨ 100% ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਹਰ ਇੱਕ ਬੱਚੇ ਨੂੰ ਕਿਤੇ ਨਾ ਕਿਤੇ ਪਾਰਟਿਸਿਪੇਟ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਕਰਾਉਣੇ ਹੈ ਦੂਸਰਾ ਸਾਡਾ ਪੈਰਾਮੀਟਰ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਸਾਡੇ ਇੰਨਾ ਪਰਸੈਂਟ ਆਫ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਇੰਟਰਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਜਾਂ ਸਟੇਟ ਲੈਵਲ ਤੇ ਵੀ ਇਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਾ ਰਹੇ ਨੇ ਨਾਓ ਵਾਈਲ ਰਿਪੋਰਟਿੰਗ ਥੀਸ again two things are to be uh, all other norms are same sanu e copies chahidiyan ne link de utte available honiya chahidiyan ne sariyan ode vich upload karke assi link dewange what is to be taken care ke agar assi ik activity ik event report kar rahe ha which is which is organized by the college then that event will be considered as a single us event de under agar panch activities ne to panch nahi count honiyan oh single event count hoye फॉर एग्जांपल असी इंटर कॉलेज टेनिस कंपटीशन कीता उस दे विच टाइयां पईयां 10 मैचेस होए तो 10 नहीं होंगे इट इज अ सिंगल इवेंट ओदी आउटकम की होएगा फर्स्ट सेकंड ते थर्ड टीम्स केडियां केडियां आई हैं किन्ने ओदे विच कॉलेजेस पार्टिसिपेट कीते या किन्नी टीमें पार्टिसिपेट कीती हैं ओदी अचीवमेंट ते ओ असी सिर्फ ओही रिपोर्ट करंगे जिथे साडी अपनी टीम भी पार्टिसिपेट कर रही होवे ਜੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਾਡੀ ਆਪਣੀ ਟੀਮ ਪਾਰਟਿਸਿਪੇਟ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਰ ਰਹੀ ਦੈਨ ਵੀ ਵੋਂਟ ਬੀ ਏਬਲ ਟੂ ਗੈਟ ਦ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਸਿਮਿਲਰਲੀ ਕੋਈ ਅਦਰ ਇੰਟਰ ਕਾਲਜ ਕਿਤੇ ਹੋਰ ਹੋ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਕਰਤਾ ਆਰ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਕਨਸਿਡਰਡ ਓਨਲੀ ਇਫ ਆਰ ਟੀਮ ਇਜ਼ ਪਾਰਟਿਸਿਪੇਟਿੰਗ ਓਵਰ देयर ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਸੇ ਲਈ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਸਾਡਾ ਏ ਕਾਲਜ ਹੈ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਿਸੇ ਬੀ ਕਾਲਜ ਨੇ ਕੋਈ ਇੰਟਰ ਕਾਲਜ ਕੰਪੀਟੀਸ਼ਨ ਕੀਤਾ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਵਾਈ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ teams of a college participated in that activity which was organized by the uh, by a college, by b college again we have to report the record in uh, the excel sheet given along with coming to the fourth indicator that is alumni engagement alumni again is very tedious ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੇ ਜਿੰਨੇ ਪੁਰਾਣੇ ਕਾਲਜਿਸ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਅਲੂਮਨੀ ਬਹੁਤ ਫਰਸ਼ਿੰਗ ਬੜੀ ਰਿਚ ਹੈ ਭੱਜ ਜਾਣਾ ਭੱਜ ਜਾਣਾ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਮੈਟਰ ਇਜ਼ ਥਿਸ ਕਿ ਕੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਰਿਕਾਰਡ ਹੈ ਪਹਿਲੀ ਗੱਲ ਦੂਸਰੀ ਗੱਲ ਕੀ ਸਾਡਾ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨਾਲ ਕੋਈ ਰਿਲੇਸ਼ਨਸ਼ਿਪ ਡਿਵੈਲਪ ਹੋਇਆ ਹੋਇਆ ਹੈ ਤੀਸਰੀ ਗੱਲ ਕੀ ਉਹ ਰਿਲੇਸ਼ਨਸ਼ਿਪ ਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਫਾਰਮਲ ਮੈਕੈਨਿਜ਼ਮ ਹੈ ਚੌਥੀ ਗੱਲ ਕੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਸ ਮੈਕੈਨਿਜ਼ਮ ਤੋਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਐਗਜ਼ਿਸਟਿੰਗ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟ ਲਈ ਕੋਈ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਲੈ ਸਕਦੇ ਆ ਲੈ ਸਕੇ ਇਹਨ
ਕਿਉਂ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਅਗਰ ਉਹ ਰਜਿਸਟਰਡ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਫਾਰਮਲ ਮੈਂਬਰਸ ਆ ਉਹਦਾ ਫਾਰਮਲ ਕਨਸਟੀਟਿਊਸ਼ਨ ਹੈ ਉਹਦੀ ਰੈਗੂਲਰ ਮੀਟਿੰਗ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਤੇ ਉਸ ਦਾ ਪ੍ਰੋਪਰ ਆਡਿਟ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਜੇ ਉਹ ਨਹੀਂ ਵੀ ਹੈ ਰਜਿਸਟਰਡ ਤਾਂ ਉਸ ਦਾ ਰੈਗੂਲਰ ਮੀਟਿੰਗਸ ਹੈਲਡ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਆਫਿਸ ਬੀਰਸ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਪ੍ਰੋਪਰ ਰਿਕਾਰਡ ਰੱਖਿਆ ਜਾਂਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀਆਂ ਰਿਵਿਊ ਮੀਟਿੰਗਸ ਹੁੰਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਸੈਕਿੰਡ ਥਿੰਗ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੇ ਇਸ ਲਿੰਕੇਜ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਕੀ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਲੈਣੇ ਆ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੇ ਕਾਲਜਸ ਜਿਹੜੇ ਮੈਂ ਨੋਟਿਸ ਕੀਤੇ ਆ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਕੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਰਿਕਾਰਡ ਹੈ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੇ ਕਾਲਜਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਕੋਈ ਨਾ ਕੋਈ ਫੈਲੋਸ਼ਿਪ ਜਾਂ ਕੋਈ ਅਵਾਰਡ ਜਾਂ ਕੋਈ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਜ਼ ਫਿਕਸ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਅਡਾਪਸ਼ਨ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਕਈ ਅਲੂਮਨੀਜ਼ ਨੇ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਇਸ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦੇ ਦੋ ਤਿੰਨ ਜਾਂ ਚਾਰ ਬੱਚੇ ਅਡਾਪਟ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਕਈਆਂ ਨੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦੀ ਹਾਇਰ ਸਟੱਡੀ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੋਈ ਹੈ ਕਈ ਅਲੂਮਨੀਜ਼ ਨੇ ਕੋਈ ਪਾਰਟਿਕੂਲਰ ਟਾਈਪ ਆਫ ਕੰਪੀਟੀਸ਼ਨਸ ਜਾਂ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀਜ਼ ਪ੍ਰਮੋਟ ਕੀਤੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਫਲਾਂ ਐਂਡ ਫਲਾਂ ਟੀਮ ਹੈ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਉਹ ਜੇ ਹੁੰਦੀ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਕਾਲਜ ਦੀ ਤੇ ਜੇ ਉਹ ਇਹ ਲੈਵਲ ਤੱਕ ਜਾਂਦੀ ਹੈ ਤਾਂ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਫੈਸਿਲਿਟੇਟ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਪੋਰਟ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਇਸ ਤੋਂ ਇਲਾਵਾ ਕੀ ਅਲੂਮਨੀ ਤੋਂ ਅਸੀਂ ਕੋਈ ਰੈਗੂਲਰ ਕੋਈ ਕੁਝ ਕਿਸੇ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਮੋਨੀਟਰੀ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਜਾਂ ਡੋਨੇਸ਼ਨ ਲੈਣ ਦੇ ਯੋਗ ਹੈ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੇ ਕੋਈ ਵਿੰਗ ਬਣਾਤਾ ਹੋਵੇ ਕੋਈ ਬਿਲਡਿੰਗ ਕੋਈ ਰੂਮ ਕੋਈ ਲੈਬ ਕੁਝ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਬਣਾਇਆ ਹੋਵੇ ਕੋਈ ਲਾਇਬ੍ਰੇਰੀ ਚ ਕੰਟਰੀਬਿਊਸ਼ਨ ਦਿੱਤੀ ਹੋਵੇ ਸੋ ਫਾਈਨੈਂਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਐਜ਼ ਵੈਲ ਐਜ਼ ਨਾਨ ਫਾਈਨੈਂਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਭਾਵ ਅਕੈਡਮਿਕ ਨਾਉ ਸਪੋਜ਼ ਵੈਰੀ ਹਾਈਲੀ ਪਲੇਸਡ ਐਨ ਇੰਟਰਪ੍ਰੈਨਰ ਇਜ਼ ਆਰ ਅਲੂਮਨਾਈ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਸਾਡੀ ਪਲੇਸਮੈਂਟ ਡਰਾਈਵ ਦੇ ਲਈ ਇਕਿਪਮੈਂਟ ਕਰਨ ਲਈ ਸਾਡੇ ਨਾਲ ਟਾਈ ਅਪ ਨੇ ਕੀਤਾ ਹੋਇਆ ਉਹਦੀ ਐਚ ਆਰ ਟੀਮ ਉਹਦੀ ਐਚ ਆਰ ਸਾਡੀ ਹੈਲਪ ਕਰਦੀ ਹੈ ਪਲੇਸਮੈਂਟ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਕਿਪ ਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਫੈਸਿਲੀਟੇਟ ਕਰਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਸੇ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਕੋਈ ਕਿਸੇ ਲੈਬ ਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਲੈਬ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਾਡਾ ਕੋਈ ਅਲੂਮਨੀਸ ਐਜ਼ ਅ ਸਾਇੰਟਿਸਟ ਬੈਠਾ ਕਿ ਉਹ ਸਾਇੰਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਮੋਸ਼ਨ ਲਈ ਟਾਈਮ ਟੂ ਟਾਈਮ ਸੈਸ਼ਨਸ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜ਼ ਕਰਨ ਕਦੇ ਕਦਾਈ ਸਾਡੇ ਕਾਲਜ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਉਂਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਪੋਲੀਟੀਸ਼ੀਅਨ ਬੈਠਾ ਤਾਂ ਕੀ ਉਹ ਕਿਸੇ ਕਰੰਟ ਇਸ਼ੂ ਤੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਤੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਡਿਬੇਟ ਤੇ ਕਿਸੇ ਐਨੂਅਲ ਫੰਕਸ਼ਨ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟ ਨੂੰ ਮੋਟੀਵੇਟ ਐਂਡ ਇਨਸਪਾਇਰ ਕਰਨ ਲਈ ਉਹ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਆਉਂਦਾ ਸੋ ਆਲ ਥੀਸ ਟਾਈਪ ਆਫ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀਜ਼ ਨਾਟ ਓਨਲੀ ਫਾਈਨੈਂਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਨਾਨ ਫਾਈਨੈਂਸ਼ੀਅਲ ਅਕੈਡਮਿਕ ਆਲਸੋ ਵੈਦਰ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਏ ਮੈਕੈਨਿਜ਼ਮ ਆਫ ਐਲੂਮਨੀ ਰਿਕਾਰਡ ਆਫ ਐਲੂਮਨੀ ਇ ਰਜਿਸਟਰਡ ਔਰ ਨਾਨ ਰਜਿਸਟਰਡ ਐਲੂਮਨੀ ਪ੍ਰੋਪਰ ਮੈਕੈਨਿਜ਼ਮ ਐਂਡ ਆਰ ਡਿਫਾਈਨਡ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਥੈਟ ਵਾਟ ਟਾਈਪ ਆਫ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਵੀ ਆਰ ਅਕਰੂਇੰਗ ਐਂਡ ਵਾਟ ਟਾਈਪ ਆਫ ਪਰਸਪੈਕਟਿਵ ਪਲਾਨ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਅਗਲੇ 10 ਸਾਲ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਐਲੂਮਨੀ ਨਾਲ ਰਲ ਕੇ ਆ ਕੁਝ ਕਰ ਲਾਂਗੇ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਤੋਂ ਆ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟਸ ਲਵਾਂਗੇ ਸੋ ਥੀਸ ਵਰ ਦ ਫੋਰ ਏਰੀਆਸ ਨਾ ਹਾਊਸ ਇਜ਼ ਓਪਨ ਫਾਰ ਐਨੀ ਡਿਸਕਸ਼ਨ ਔਨ this fifth criteria uh, before that i will take just 2 uh, 3 minutes it is a checklist how we can enable ourselves as an institute to get maximum benefit uh, out of uh, uh, for, out of this fifth criteria kyunki main starting ch dassya edi weight is second highest hai ta nine points ne ਇਹ ਤੁਹਾਡੇ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਵੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕੋਈ ਇਸ ਏਰੀਆ ਦਾ ਇਨਚਾਰਜ ਕੋਆਰਡੀਨੇਟਰ ਵਟਐਵਰ ਇਜ਼ ਯੂਰ ਮੈਕੈਨਿਜ਼ਮ ਤਾਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਸਾਹਮਣੇ ਆ ਚੀਜ਼ਾਂ ਹੋਣੀਆਂ ਹੋਣੀਆਂ ਚਾਹੀਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਉਹ ਤੁਹਾਡੀ ਆਈਕਿਊ ਏਸੀ ਨੂੰ ਟਾਈਮ ਐਂਡ ਅਗੇਨ ਦਿੰਦਾ ਰਹੇਗਾ ਤੇ ਉਹਦੇ ਤੇ
ਇਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਸਾਡੇ ਐਕਸੈਪਟ ਹੋਣਗੇ ਅਪਾਰਟ ਫਰਮ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ ਆਈ ਹੈਡ ਆਲਰੇਡੀ ਡਿਸਕਸਡ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦਾ ਬਾਈ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮਪਲ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਦਾ ਸਪੋਰਟਸ ਐਂਡ ਕਲਚਰਲ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀਜ਼ ਬਟ ਨਾਟ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਥਿੰਗਸ ਦੈਨ ਏਟਥ ਪੁਆਇੰਟ ਇਜ਼ ਕਿੰਨੇ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਨੂੰ ਅਸੀਂ ਪਾਰਟਿਸਿਪੇਟ ਕਰਤਾ ਭਾਵ ਸਾਡਾ ਇਹ ਮਤਲਬ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਿ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਟੌਪ ਕਰ ਸਕਦਾ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਹੀ ਭੇਜੀਏ ਠੀਕ ਹੈ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਭੇਜ ਰਹੇ ਹਾਂ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਕੀ ਸਾਡਾ ਨੀਚੇ ਤੋਂ ਨਰਚਰਿੰਗ ਪ੍ਰੋਸੈਸ ਵੀ ਚੱਲ ਰਿਹਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਹਰੇਕ ਬੱਚੇ ਨੂੰ ਇੱਕ ਲੈਵਲ ਤੇ ਪਾਰਟਿਸਿਪੇਸ਼ਨ ਤਾਂ ਦੇ ਦਈਏ ਜੇ ਉਹ ਸਟੇਟ ਲੈਵਲ ਤੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਜਾ ਪਾਉਂਦਾ ਤਾਂ ਕੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਬਾਕੀ ਸਾਰੇ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਐਕਲਿਪਸਡ ਅੰਡਰ ਹਿਸ ਔਰ ਹਰ ਸ਼ੈਡੋ ਨੋ ਅਸੀਂ ਮੈਕਸਿਮਮ ਨੂੰ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਦਿੰਨੇ ਆ ਤੇ ਉਹ ਬੈਨੀਫਿਟ ਸਾਡਾ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਖੂਹ ਦੇ ਡੱਡੂ ਵਾਲੀ ਗੱਲ ਸਿਰਫ ਸਾਡੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਚ ਨਾ ਰਹਿ ਜਵੇ ਉਹ ਐਟ ਲੀਸਟ ਇੰਟਰ ਕਾਲਜ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜ਼ਰੂਰ ਜਾਵੇ ਲਾਸਟਲੀ ਸਾਡਾ ਅਲੂਮਨੀ ਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਰਿਲੇਸ਼ਨਸ਼ਿਪ ਕਿਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹ ਅਸੀਂ ਲਵਾਂਗੇ ਆ ਆਈ ਰਿਕੁਐਸਟ ਦ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜ਼ਰਸ ਟੂ ਅਲਾਓ ਪਰਮਜੀਤ ਕੌਰ ਸ਼ੀ ਹੈਜ਼ ਹੈਲੋ ਜੀ ਮੈਮ ਪਲੀਜ਼ ਗੋ ਇਨ ਗੁੱਡ ਆਫਟਰਨੂਨ ਸਰ uh sir i have got one query uh suppose a student is pass out of uh, 1920 session and he gets a job in uh, the year 22 uh, in which session we are to include his data uh of course you will be mentioning in the same session or in the relevant session but if you have the record with you suppose you 20 is pass out kar gaya ਜੀ ਆਈ ਐਕਸੈਪਟ ਯੂ ਥਿੰਕ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਕੀ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਪੋਸਟ ਗ੍ਰੈਜੂਏਸ਼ਨ ਕਰ ਗਿਆ ਜੀ ਤਾਂ ਉਹ ਜਿੱਥੋਂ ਪੋਸਟ ਗ੍ਰੈਜੂਏਸ਼ਨ ਕੀਤੀ ਆ ਉਹ ਇੰਸਟੀਚਿਊਟ ਦਾ ਕਲੇਮ ਕਰੇਗਾ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਅਗਰ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਬਾਅਦ ਦੀ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹਦੀ ਕੋਈ ਫਾਰਮਲ ਡਿਗਰੀ ਐਂਡ ਕੁਆਲੀਫਿਕੇਸ਼ਨ ਨਹੀਂ ਹੈ ਹਾਂ ਉਹ ਆਪਣਾ ਸਕਿੱਲ ਐਂਡ ਕੈਪੈਸਿਟੀ ਇਨਹਾਂਸਮੈਂਟ ਬਾਅਦ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਐਡੀਸ਼ਨਲ ਉਹਦੇ ਨਾਲ ਕੀਤੀ ਈਵਨ ਦੈਨ ਵੀ ਕੈਨ ਕਲੇਮ ਬਿਕੋਜ਼ ਵੀ ਹੈਲਪਡ ਹਿਮ ਟੂ ਮੇਕ ਹਿਸ ਬੇਸਿਸ ਐਂਡ ਦਾ ਫਾਊਂਡੇਸ਼ਨ ਹਾਂ ਉਸ ਤੋਂ ਅੱਗੇ ਉਹਨੇ ਹੈਲਪ ਕੀਤੀ ਹੈ ਕਿਸੇ ਐਕਸਟਰਨਲ ਏਜੰਸੀ ਤੋਂ ਹੈਲਪ ਲਈ ਹੈ ਜਿਹੜੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਨਹੀਂ ਦਵਾ ਸਕੇ ਈਵਨ ਦੈਨ ਵੀ ਟਿਲ ਵੀ ਰਿਪੋਰਟਿੰਗ ਸਰ ਜਿਵੇਂ ਹੁਣ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਪੋਜ਼ ਕਰੋ ਉਹਨੇ ਐਮਐਸਸੀ ਕੀਤੀ ਤੇ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਐਮਐਸਸੀ ਹੈ ਨਹੀਂ ਕਾਲਜ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੇ ਫਿਰ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਕਲੇਮ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ ਨਹੀਂ ਜੇ ਉਹ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਕਲੇਮ ਕਰੋਗੇ ਕਿ ਆਫਟਰ ਬੀਐਸਸੀ ਉਹਨੇ ਐਮਐਸਸੀ ਜੁਆਇਨ ਕਿੱਥੇ ਕਰ ਲਈ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਉਹ ਉਸ ਕੰਪੋਨੈਂਟ ਦੇ ਅੰਡਰ ਕਾਊਂਟ ਹੋ ਜਾਏਗਾ ਪਲੇਸਮੈਂਟ ਨਹੀਂ ਉਹ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰੈਸ਼ਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਉਹਦਾ ਕਲੇਮ ਲੈ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਹੋ ਓਕੇ ਜੀ ਓਕੇ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਵੈਰੀ ਮੱਚ ਸਰ ਥੈਂਕ ਯੂ ਅਨਦਰ ਰਿਟਨ ਕੁਐਰੀ ਇਜ਼ ਥਿਸ ਕੇ ਇਫ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀਜ਼ ਹੈਲਡ ਇਨ ਕੋਲੈਬੋਰੇਸ਼ਨ ਵਿਦ ਐਨਐਸਐਸ ਦੇ ਵਿਲ ਬੀ ਕਾਊਂਟਡ ਅੰਡਰ ਐਨਐਸਐਸ ਆਰ ਡਿਪਾਰਟਮੈਂਟ ਆਫ ਬੋਥ ਹੂ ਹੈਵ ਆਰਗੇਨਾਈਜ਼ਡ ਥੈਟ ਯੈਸ ਇਹ ਇਸ਼ੂ ਬੜਾ ਟੀਡੀਅਸ ਹੈ ਯੂਜ਼ੂਲੀ ਸਾਡੇ ਕਾਲਜਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕੀ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਕਿ ਅਸੀਂ ਕਾਮਨ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀ ਕਰ ਲੈਂਦੇ ਹਾਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਕਾਲਜਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅੱਛਾ ਉਹ ਜੇ ਇਨਵੋਲਵ ਕਰਨ ਲਈ ਲਾਸਟ ਮੂਮੈਂਟ ਤੇ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਰਾਈਟਿੰਗ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਅਸੀਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਐਨਐਸਐਸ ਵੀ ਪਾਤੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਬੀਐਸਜੀ ਵੀ ਪਾਤੀ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਾਡੇ ਰੈੱਡ ਕਰਾਸ ਸੋਸਾਇਟੀ ਵੀ ਪਾਤੀ ਆਲ ਥੋਸ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਇਨਵੋਲਵ ਕਰ ਲਈਆਂ ਬਟ ਅਵੋਇਡ ਦਿਸ ਥਿੰਗ ਕਿਉਂਕਿ ਇਹ ਸਿੰਗਲ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਕਲੇਮ ਸਾਡਾ ਮੰਨਿਆ ਜਾਊਗਾ ਹਾਂ ਹੁਣ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ ਕੀ ਆ ਰਹੀ ਹੈ ਇਸ ਟਾਈਮ ਐਨਈਪੀ ਦੇ ਅੰਡਰ ਸਾਨੂੰ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੀਆਂ ਡਾਇਰੈਕਸ਼ਨਸ ਮਲਟੀਪਲ ਏਜੰਸੀਆਂ ਤੋਂ ਆ ਜਾਂਦੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਨੂੰ ਫਾਰ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮਪਲ ਸਾਡਾ ਇੰਟਰਨੈਸ਼ਨਲ ਯੂਨਿਟੀ ਡੇ ਉਹ ਸਾਡੇ ਕੋਲ ਇੱਕ ਸਰਕੂਲਰ ਐਨਐਸਐਸ ਤੋਂ ਆ ਜਾਣਾ ਇੱਕ ਯੂਥ ਸਰਵਿਸਿਸ ਤੋਂ ਆ ਜਾਣਾ ਇੱਕ ਐਨਸੀਸੀ ਤੋਂ ਆ ਜਾਣਾ
uh, the means uh, there were awareness programs were held there were uh, lectures were held but under body program so that all those activities will come under one or the department can claim uh, yes you you basically raised two queries two questions very pertinent yes. questions yes. yes firstly all those mandates which has been made by certain government and discontinued after some time but is the typical example of that secondly if you have formed your body groups under your uh, uh, mentor groups then it is otherwise your body is worked under your mentorship because mentor is a regular scheme of the institute whereas body may or may not be aaj shuru hui kal aaj khatam hogi is liye mentoring toadi bahut vast stream hai us de vich for the time body program bhi us de vich aa gayi si second thing ki hun body tusi keha ke ikko hi activity manni jayegi no body de vich sade tin char tarah diyan si ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਲੈਵਲਸ ਮੰਨੇ ਗਏ ਸੀ ਪਹਿਲੀ ਗੱਲ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਸਾਰੇ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਨੂੰ ਵੱਡੀ ਗਰੁੱਪ ਬਣਾਤੇ ਇਟ ਇਜ਼ ਵਨ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀ ਸੈਕੰਡਲੀ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਦਾ ਕੋਈ ਰੈਗੂਲਰ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਅਵੇਅਰਨੈਸ ਦਾ ਹੁੰਦਾ ਹੈ ਉਹਨੂੰ ਅਵੇਅਰਨੈਸ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਲੈ ਜਾਓਗੇ ਅਵੇਅਰਨੈਸ ਅਗੇਂਸਟ ਡਰੱਗਸ ਥਰਡਲੀ ਤੁਸੀਂ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਆਇਡੈਂਟੀਫਾਈ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਕਿ ਹਾਊ ਮੈਨੀ ਆਫ ਯੂਰ ਰਿਸਕ ਪ੍ਰੋਨ ਆਰ ਯੂਰ ਅਫੈਕਟਡ ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟਸ ਉਹ ਤੁਹਾਡਾ ਥਰਡ ਲੈਵਲ ਆ ਗਿਆ ਫੋਰਥ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਵੀ ਕੋਈ ਪ੍ਰੋਗਰਾਮ ਇਸ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਦਾ ਕਰ ਰਹੇ ਹੋ ਫਾਰ ਐਡਰੈਸਿੰਗ ਹਿਸ ਪ੍ਰੋਬਲਮ for example d addiction etc oh aa gaya so oh je todi tinne chare ode vich alag alag cha rahi hai tusi alag alag karoge second thing for example awareness so awareness ne assi repeated activities kitiyan after every week ya every fortnight karde si oh bilkul alag alag hai oh alag alag hi report hongiyan kyunki unna di date alag hai lekin component shayad agar oh sari awareness ne ta oh awareness de under i hope i am clear and agar ye badi program hun oda focus de vich sade nahi reha ta jis year de vich oh relevant si te oh activities hoyiyan si us year de vich ohna nu report karange thank you sir any other query uh, participant can ask if they have any kind of query related to criteria 5 so uh, with this uh, let me thank dr sundar ji for session it was very extensive and uh, very much well defined i say well defined uh, I, i i am very new to this but my doubts have been cleared in, uh, with this session thank you sir thank you very thank much you. for being a part of this uh, excuse hope- me sir yeah yes sir kamal ji sir, please am i audible sir yeah yeah you are ji sir this is this is kamal khatra from jawala nehru government college uh, sir i just want to ask one thing that even only the participation in the youth festival like zonal level and it is considered to be as a student progression sir uh, no 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 not not student progression shayad main clear nahi kar paya ye sada participation in activities utthe do ਜਿਹੜੇ ਆ ਟੇਬਲ ਮੰਗੇ ਗਏ ਨੇ ਇੱਕ ਟੇਬਲ ਅਚੀਵਮੈਂਟਸ ਦਾ ਪਹਿਲਾ ਦੂਸਰਾ ਹੈ ਇੰਟਰ ਕਾਲਜ ਪਾਰਟਿਸਿਪੇਸ਼ਨ ਦਾ ਉੱਥੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਉਹਨਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਇੰਟਰ ਕਾਲਜ ਪਾਰਟਿਸਿਪੇਸ਼ਨ ਲਿਖਾਂਗੇ ਫਾਰ ਐਗਜ਼ਾਮਪਲ ਸਾਡੀਆਂ ਪੰਜ ਐਕਟੀਵਿਟੀਆਂ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ 30 ਸਟੂਡੈਂਟ ਉੱਥੇ ਪਾਰਟਿਸਿਪੇਟ ਕਰੇ ਆਏ ਜ਼ੋਨ ਇੰਟਰ ਜ਼ੋਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਜਾਂ ਜ਼ੋਨ ਦੇ ਵਿੱਚ ਉਹ ਸਾਰੇ ਪਾਰਟਿਸਿਪੇਸ਼ਨ ਚ ਆ ਗਏ ਲੇਕਿਨ ਜਿਹੜਾ ਪਹਿਲਾ ਟੇਬਲ ਸੀ ਉਹ ਅਚੀਵਮੈਂਟ ਦਾ ਸੀ ਸਪੋਜ਼ ਉਹਦੇ ਵਿੱਚੋਂ ਸਾਡੀਆਂ ਸਿਰਫ ਦੋ ਟੀਮਸ ਜਿਹੜੀਆਂ ਨੇ ਉਹ ਫਸਟ ਜਾਂ ਸੈਕੰਡ ਪ੍ਰਾਈਜ਼ ਲੈ ਕੇ ਆਈਆਂ ਉੱਥੇ ਅਸੀਂ ਸਿਰਫ ਦੋ ਰਿਪੋਰਟ ਕਰਾਂਗੇ okay sir okay thank you sir thank you uh, any other query uh, participants any from the college okay so uh, thank you for there sir thank you for helping the colleges to understand the essence of nac accreditation for criteria 5 hope we will see you uh, soon in the offline workshop to be held on 15 and 16 october G and you ambassador uh, thank you very much kishwinder dr kishwinder thank you thank, thank you, you participants for joining we will be meeting tomorrow to discuss criteria 6 and 7 have thank a good you, thank you thank so you thank you